Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Xbox Two Podcast. In fact, this is the last Xbox Two Podcast before the showcase. Well, at least the last one with Jez Corden. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, episode 268. And as we already, you know, I already said, we have the managing editor, Diablo, uh, lore master extraordinaire, <laughs> Jez Corden. Your time is finally here. Diablo is upon us. Ah. And I know you ah. are as happy <laughs> as, as possibly can be, right? Yes, friend. It is, you know, well, I reviewed it. I already know it's everything I'd hoped for, but I was kind of nervous. Would the servers stay together? And I suppose it is the on- only the early access period for those who bought the Deluxe Edition. So maybe we're not getting a true taste of what the servers are going to be like yet, but I'm impressed with how smooth it's been. Played all last night and, you know, I just I just love it. I- I'm I'm in my happy place right now. 12 years since Diablo 3. And uh, after all the, the tumult at Blizzard, um, it's sort of it's just nice to see them get a win, I guess, to be honest. Now, now let's, th- let's hope Xbox can do the same. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, somebody's got to get a W. I mean, PlayStation was holding that L uh, last week, <laughs> and hopefully oh, Xbox be holding that W after... Uh, after the Maybe. showcase on the 11th, I mean, because, you know, Maybe. Xbox, was they actually they held that L with Redfall. And uh, they, I guess they continue to hold that L because Jason Schreier finally wrote his expose about it, which Damn. basically kind of confirmed what you had talked about already, right? That people people yeah, li- people were bit. like, Jazz Corden, fanboy extraordinaire, lying about all this stuff. <laughs> but once again, who's right? Right? Yeah. Well, you know. I mean, there was some really interesting details in Jason's report, and we're gonna we're gonna dig into that. But you know, it's it's just nice to get vindicated from like you know a professional journalist. I don't really consider myself a journalist. I haven't been trained as a journalist. I came I came in the in into this job in the weirdest possible sideways direction via via hobby blogging. So it's it's kind of hard to see myself as a, a true journalist. I haven't been trained as a journalist. So it's kind of nice when like you see your information, your reports get corroborated by like legitimate outlets like bloomberg it's just really cool but yeah we're gonna get into that more deeply in a bit oh yeah oh yeah we're gonna we got a big show this is this is our prediction episode our preview episode my video should be coming sometime soon maybe tomorrow maybe monday depending on when i have time to actually make it um but i guess we should let people know that this is our last episode me and you together until after the showcase because you are completely busy next week you have abs- <laughs> you have absolutely no time to even do the show on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Nope. Uh, and yet you're flying to LA for FanFest. So hopefully you can meet up with some of the Xbox Two peeps, the community that supports yes, us so indeed. amazingly. Uh, so this is our last episode together. We should be doing a show after the showcase on Tuesday, June 13th, which would also yes. be after the extended sh- uh, showcase. So we'll have a lot to talk about. Um, I Are will an extended showcase. Yeah, they're now? doing an extended showcase on on Tuesday the thirteenth. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. Interesting. So there's going to be a load of stuff. There should be a load of stuff. So that that should be a big episode. So even though me and Jez aren't doing another show, I am doing Xbox Two next week with um oh a person a random person I, I you want to do a show with or maybe multiple people but <laughs> uh there will be a show. So don't worry about that. And then the following week, like I said, me and Jez will review our thoughts about the showcase on that Tuesday. And I'm planning for a bigger show with more people on that Friday. So we got a lot of Xbox Two uh, coming at you. A lot of lot of takes. I mean, this is important because like this showcase is, hey, what what does Microsoft got up their sleeve? What's the roadmap look like? Because you know you don't know anything after Forza Motorsport. And hell, we don't even know when Forza Motorsport's even coming out. So nope. Microsoft's got a lot they can show. They got a lot of promises they need to sort of keep, right? So there's a lot of things. Uh, it's going to be two-hour extravaganza with Starfield and everything. I'm I'm excited. You know, it's kind of getting me pumped reading everybody's comments here, the predictions about what to expect. 
Uh, so yeah, if you guys do us a huge favor, make sure you hit the like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new. I know there's always new people circling on uh, the show, especially for a show like this. Um, and and let everybody know that we are live. I don't know how long this episode's gonna be because there's not really a lot that happened this week. So you know, if if you guys want a four hour show, maybe we can put one together. It might be a little bit shorter one. And, uh, you know, if any of the Patreon members, they want to ask some questions, I did notice there are only 15 there, so, uh, I think Jez was a little bit, uh, too harsh to kind of keep the question inflation down about keeping it to a a sentence or two. Uh, (laughs) I was like, maybe it should just be a single paragraph, which is four or five. Like, you know, if you can get your point in in a a paragraph, that'd be fine. But if you got any late, uh, you know, questions you want to ask, uh, make sure you go over there and hit that up because we'll be... You know, we always get to that at the end, and um, yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a great show. I, I'm really excited about it, even though Jez, we mm-hmm. are coming off a five hour podcast. Yes, yes, we are the defining dukes. But to be fair, our last podcast was yeah four and a half hours. four and a half hours, and then we <laughs> we did a five hour show, five hours with Mister Maddie yes. plays and Lord Cognito. The Defining Dukes, the Dukes, on Wednesday. Uh, I believe it is now live for their Patreon members and live to everybody on Sunday. So yeah, that was uh, that's something. Five hour show it was definitely you should. Jez is on camera. If you want to see a Jez get slowly more tired, hour by hour, minute by minute, where he's like, <laughs> just basically thinking well, probably man. kill my. Watch that episode because you can see it. Dude, dude, one of the things I noticed was um, at the start of the show, the sun is still up. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> like, the sun's setting, and then, like, by the end of the show, it's, like, four in the morning, and the sun's starting to come back up. <laughs> and, like, when I went to bed after that show, the birds were tweeting and stuff. I was like, God damn. <laughs> that, was that, was a, that was a long show. It was show. a lot of fun, man. It was, it was a lot, a lot of, fun. of fun. They put on a great show. So yeah. make sure you check that out. But... We're going to have some housekeeping done before we get into everything. And this week we have a returning sponsor, Raycon. Isn't that right, Jez? Yes, indeed. We are sponsored this week by Raycon. I'm sure you've heard of Raycon from their countless collaborations with creators from across the digital world. In the five years since their launch, they've become known for a few things. All day comfort, a perfect fit, an impressive battery life, and of course, premium sound at affordable prices. What you may not have heard, though, is about Raycon's gaming series. The gaming series consists of two staple gaming audio products, wireless gaming earbuds, compact, portable, and universal, and wireless gaming headphones, comfortable and immersive. Raycons, hypersyncs, <laughs> hypersyncs, Raycons, hypersync, low latency technology lets you hear what you see, lag free. Three sound profile. Ugh, come on, I'm screwing this up, bro. <laughs> I'm screwing this up, bro. Let's try again. Three sound profiles. Choose your character, pure, balanced, or bass. Seamlessly pair with all major platforms, including Xbox and PC, with the click of a button. Head to Raycon.com forward slash XB2 today to get 15% off your Raycon order. You also get 20% off Raycon gaming earbuds or 10% off their gaming headphones. That's buyraycon.com slash XB2 to score 15% off. And thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. <laughs> yeah, and I use, uh, I use their earbuds every single day. Um, I use them to basically do this podcast. Every single podcast I do hook up my Raycon earbuds to the PC so I can hear everything. And, uh, I always take them out on walks with me to listen to some music. So I'm not basically thinking about how, uh, awful it is to go on all these walks and, and, and this ridiculous summer heat of 92 degrees. I just keep on focused to my Pink Floyd and my corn and all the wonderful music that I listen with uh, Spotify. So, and you can use them on, they got headphones for your Xbox as well. So um, 
I really enjoy my Raycon earbuds. So check them out. Links in the description below uh, if you want to check out what they have on offer. And you can get 15% off with our code XB2. So hit up that link. Thank you for Raycon for uh, sponsoring this episode. And uh, we also have the wonderful people at patreon.com slash XB2. We just did our Xbox 2 plus one episode yesterday with Mr. Badbit talking about the PlayStation Showcase and talking about the Xbox Showcase and all that stuff. I thought it was really well done. We do have another Xbox 2 plus one coming later this month after the Showcase with Paris Lilly of Gamertag Radio and Kind of Funny Xcast. So I can't wait to talk to Paris about everything Xbox. It's going to be great. But we do have some shout-outs here. The Grandis of Bip, Chris Parnese, Starsman, Hey Blinken, The Bearded Tate, Sleets XZ, Army Dude 52C, Mr. Butter Jeans, William Schumacher, Ryan Kipple, Foreign Object, Mythic Marty, Tyler, Gunstar 75, Moronic Donkey 99, C Money, Mario Kart Madman on YouTube, Makazilla, PS5, the new PS3 era. Randall Thor 19, Silas, Eric Gregory, <laughs> Elijah Vasquez, James Moore, Halo is the franchise player, Katriox, Wiki Fallon, Bright Tundra One, Jasper Shap, Joseph Campbell, Ponybot Worcester Stars, <laughs> Mr. Joanna Dog, <Dark, laughs> Justin Duhel, <laughs> Frank. Sauce. Worcester, yeah. uh, now I'm signing it wrong. Worcestershire Sauce. Worcestershire Sauce. Frank Mariano, <laughs> PB Broking, <laughs> Justin Miller, Asa T, and Madison, Untidy Tim, Grizzly Mofo OG, <laughs> Governor Grimm, Z- DZ Huffin, Justin Sago, Andrew Courtney, Wagerman, Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, Wolfgang KPZ, and Ralph Wiggum. Thank you guys so much for supporting uh, what we do here on the Xbox 2. So, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, man. We got some super tests now as well. I know. We, we, it, I'm <laughs> excited. I'm excited for the show. Because yeah, predictions I, are I'm, always I fun. feel really, yeah. Predictions I feel really energized right now. Yeah. I feel, I, I'm in a good, I'm in a good place. You're in a good, because you got place. Diablo, bro. That's why you're in a good yeah, place. Yeah, Got Diablo, got cool stuff from Xbox coming up. You know, the sun's out. It's nice weather for a change. And I've got an Asus ROG Ally here Dude, as well. Dude, you, you got an Asus? I did. I got the, the Republic of Gamers Ally. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, there's loads of stuff going on. I'm traveling next week. And yeah, I'm energized. I'm looking forward to the show, man. All right. So let's get into uh, some of these... Super chat, see what people are saying here. We have uh, one from BN- BMG. First time catching the show live. Can't wait for the Xbox Showcase. What game are you most anticipated to see at the show? I mean, Jez, mm. the one the one game you want to see the most over all the others at the Showcase. I mean, I, I highly doubt it's going to be there. I mean, we're going to go into our predictions in more detail in a bit, but I really, I really want to see Gears. You know, I, I want to see the Coalition. I want to see what they've been working on. So that, that would make the show for me. A reveal for gears but honestly like out of what we all probably is going to be there i'm really excited for starfield i'm I, you know todd games i love them so that's all that's all me baby what about you man i mean i think everybody knows what i am most anticipating to see and that's some hellblade yeah. 2 action baby i i i'm shocked i mean you, you, sh- you shouldn't be you know me well <laughs> enough everybody in chat knows me hellblade 2 the most anticipated game for me by any of Xbox or Bethesda Studios or any of their projects with, you know, uh, third part or second, what would be second party, right? Um, I am very, 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 very curious to see gameplay and combat because they've, I wouldn't say hidden it, but I would say they haven't uh, shown it off. It's like the first trailer was just like, all right, we're announcing it. Uh, second trailer was very much like, what you what you call him, Defining Duke? A, a uh, basically like a, a, a cinematic. Uh, a, a, I forget how you describe that, that like eight minute look. Uh, I can't of, remember either. Like in engine. Well, in-engine no, it was like it was like it was like gameplay, but it was more like a cutscene, an interact. I think that's what he called it, an interactive cutscene. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. And it's like, all right, that's cool. And on rails. Yeah, I, I, you know, Hellblade's kind of known for that, known for the story, and but they need to improve on the com- on the combat. Like, I don't want the game to be like it was in the first one, where it was like, oh, here's a combat section, 
And then you move on, and it's like, oh, it's the puzzle section, and there's some walking, and oop, it's the combat section. Rinse, repeat. It's yeah. got to be more, more than More that. dynamic. It's got to yeah, it's gotta be more involved, more different combat scenarios. It can't be that copy-paste of what they did when they were independent. So I'm very interested in finding out, because I might imagine if they show it again, they have to like showcase the combat and what the game's like. And yeah. I am like super interested because it's going to tell me a lot. It's going to tell me a lot about Xbox Game Studios. It's going to tell me a lot about, okay, you have all these other like, compulsion games and all these other studios that were kind of double A that want have aspirations to be bigger, triple A essentially. And how much. Microsoft- I mean, we're at the risk of going off on a tangent, and we're, we are going to talk about predictions in, in more detail. I think that's that's the the thing we're all kind of waiting to see now. Is like, oh, yeah, Microsoft, you acquired all these studios on their labs, Psychonauts, and whatever. This is sort of like the real first opportunity we've had to see what uh, the post Xbox acquisition um life of these studios kind of looks like because psychonauts was in development before wasteland 3 was in development before and like all these other games were in development before but i think like hellblade and you know perfect dark and state of the k3 a lot of these games are, are now pure xbox games you can't you can't really say they were in development before you know and the pandemic screwed things up sure but yeah this is a uh, there's a lot a lot of intrigue in this show and uh yeah, I'm here for it. You know, I wouldn't. I would make a poll about what is your most anticipated game, but we can only have four options. But in yeah, chat, true. let me know. Just let me so I can see it. Out of all, it could be any game. It could be rumored stuff. It could be something that may not be there. Tell me what would make you the happiest. To what game? What could Microsoft show that would make you the happiest? The number one on your list for me, it's Hellblade Two. For Jez, what, what what was the game that you said was the one that you wanted, I wanted to, see? to see? Gears or the Coalition. You wanted to see essentially Gear Six or Coalition show up. Let me know what is the number one game on your list that you want to see more than any of the others. And uh, yeah, Par- I'll put that I'll put that question on Spotify as well. Yeah, Paris in chat says I get to meet Jez next week and he's excited. I, I'm I'm nice. I'm, a, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of jealous. I want to meet Paris. Get a fly, too. bro. I want to meet everybody. I want to go. You know, get a flight, man. Get I didn't get flight. invited. Use your though. YouTube meetings. Get the get the private jet out of storage, bro. Bro, I didn't get invited. Well, actually, I did get invited, but I told him I wasn't going, so that that'd be a lie. I did get invited. Yeah. I said, I well, said, there you go. I said I wasn't going. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to. I'm, I'll D, I'm the DM Paris and get that date locked down for Xbox Two Plus One with him. Uh, there's gonna be a lot to talk about after the showcase. Hopefully, all good, right? Hopefully, hopefully, it's all good. Yeah. Ooh, I hope it's good. <laughs> right? Yeah. A lot, a lot of, uh, I see a lot of Fable, a lot of Avowed, a lot of, uh, some Contraband, oh, Scalebound, of course. Somebody would, would say <laughs> Scalebound, like that's actually going to be there. Your Gear 6, uh, uh, Fables. The Scalebound Massives in the chat. Yeah. So. There's a lot there, of Scalebound in the chat. <laughs> there is. <laughs> All right. So uh, next one we have here is from Banana Peel Jack. By three they come, Ran, Jez and Diablo 4. My favorite podcast and the perfect podcast game. What a day. A lot of people yeah. playing Diablo 4. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm not playing it because it basically came down to this. I like Diablo, but I don't love Diablo. And it was like, do I want to spend $90 to play it four days early? Or just wait until Tuesday and spend 70 So it's like... I like Diablo, you but get some cosmetics yeah, as well. But, you also know me, Jez. I couldn't care less <laughs> about any cosmetics. You know, when when they were like, "Hey, help us in the server slam, and you can get this little donkey to carry your character around." Like, I didn't care. <laughs> you know, or, or bro, or, what, what, it's, what, what, it's a horn. Thank you very or much. Or was it like a pup, like a pup in your back, or like carrying yeah, like, yeah, some, yeah, something like a, that? I'm like, I don't care yeah, about that. They're like, back. go to KFC and get uh, some because it's like. I never care about that stuff. <laughs> so I, I like Diablo, but not enough to spend $90 to play it, play it early or $100 or whatever it is. So hopefully all you guys are enjoying it. And uh, it seems like you are. And it, seems, it does seem like the servers are holding up at least. Yeah, I'm shocked. I'm frankly shocked about this. But it is early access. So we'll, we'll see what happens next week when the floodgates open. Yes. Yeah? Uh, Jax82 <laughs> says, so no PlayStation 2 podcast because of the showcase? Um, 
Well, we, we sort of did our PlayStation 2 podcast last week after for talking about the PlayStation <laughs> show. But if you're talking about like the Xbox showcase, mine and Jez's reactions will be on Tuesday. Well, I, I'm probably going to stream the showcase like I've done the last two years. So if you want to watch my reactions, you can always you know subscribe to the channel and we can watch the show together. And either be incredibly excited about the future of Xbox, or we'd be sitting there shaking our head being like, did Doom they really just do the 12-month thing again, Jazz? What's going on? <laughs> you know? We, we can either... Did they really finish the event with the Blinks yeah. reboot? He's like, well, we can either be thrilled together, or we can either be despondent together. So I'll be, I'll be streaming uh, that show, most likely, by myself on Sunday. And then the Xbox Two with Jez on Tuesday, and then a bigger show with a bunch of people on that Friday. So, and uh, oh, oh, we got my Bridge Four brother Slow Mo here. He says Bridge Four: Life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination. Which is anybody listening? That is kind of the motto of the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, best fantasy author going around right now, best series ongoing. Uh, Slomo says, I know the destination of the show Xbox Showcase journey better be Fable Gameplay. Ooh, Fable Gameplay. Mm, Fable Gameplay. Mm. I think... I'm not too sure about Fable Gameplay. Mm. I would I would turn those expectations around, my Bridge 4 brother. I would... Uh, I, d- I wouldn't expect CGI, because that, would be, that would be a mistake. But I don't expect Fable to launch until 2025. And that's still two years from now. I'm not saying there couldn't be gameplay snippets within a trailer they may show. But I'm expecting more in-engine sort of things. In-engine cutscenes, in-engine overview of the world. Stuff like that. I don't think we will see straight on like, hey, this is how the game controls and this is what it looks like. Maybe, Maybe we will, but... My guts, my gut says, I wouldn't expect gameplay, right, Jess? Yeah. If it is, if it is there, you know, I, I don't, I don't expect like a hands-on demo with someone with a controller. It's probably going to be an in-engine kind of overview, maybe similar to the last Hellblade outing. But we'll see, we'll see. I mean, if it even is there, it might well not be there. You know, mm. I, I don't think, I don't think the, I don't think the, because they put up some tweets, didn't they, about f- that people took to be. Oh, this is Fable. I don't necessarily think that's what they were going for, personally, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. The jury's out. The jury's out. The jury is out. Uh, Souls Ninja says Fable about Hellblade 2, Forza, Contraband, and Starfield. Beck's Xbox show ever. I mean, that is that is a heavy, heavy hitter list. You know, if they it could is. show all that stuff, maybe we'll be sitting pretty after the showcase. Uh, Supernova, he says, does Phil Spencer know... Uh, like the huge backlash, if Fable's not on the show after teasing, hashtag Jim Lion crying afraid of ABK closed Ryan. That's a new one. <laughs> I've heard that one before. That's a new one. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, honestly, I honestly don't know. I, I kind of feel like if they were genuinely teasing uh, Fable, it might have been a little bit more overt than that. Um, I think that might have just been an accident. But I don't know. I I, lo- I saw that, and I thought like the gl- the glitter is a reference to the the color of the background, surely. And the, you know the the, gl- the they chose glittery music, but it's not exactly fable. Music. All right, you know what? Since we're talking about this, let's just dive right into the fable tease, shall we? Let's get into it because we're we're talking okay. about it now, and I'm sure maybe we'll even talk about it later when we actually come to the preview. So. I put out a video out on Wednesday. I don't know. Did Windows Central put out an article? I don't think we. I don't think we put an article out because I was like, I don't think this. You're is like favorite. literally the only website who didn't. IGN had one. Gamespot had one. Rock paper shotgun had like literally in my video. I was like, here I am on Google. I'm typing in Fable Tees, and it's just article after article from major media outlets talking about Fable. And did Microsoft just use Fable? You had Forbes even like saying Fable confirmed for the Xbox show. Wow. Nice, nice bit of clickbait there. Uh, 
But oh, every hilarious. every major media outlet essentially wrote some article about Fable, and now the fans also are thinking, "Yo, this is Fable." Now the reason is because they put they put out a tweet on Wednesday with someone picking up a controller and a bunch of glitter leading up the stairs to this PC where it says seems important. See you on June 11th for the showcase. And just by itself, just that doesn't really mean much. Now what got people really curious was the music very whimsical, very like fan fantastical, very like kind of one of those like cello, like one of those like violins, you just pluck a string kind of like curious and like, Oh, what's going on here? The thing was, it was very, very similar resemblance to Fable music over the years, especially if you go and listen to the Bowerstone track on YouTube, yeah. like Fable Bowerstone. It sounds very similar to that, where you could think, wow, this could be music for the new Fable, right? So people are like, wow, that is Fable music. And then you kind of get in deeper into the speculation about, well... Oh, that's sh- glitter trail. Is that is that a glitter trail? Because Fable is always used like a golden line that sort of glitters. Yeah, to lead you to, to the lead objective. you to yeah. your next quest area. And I mean, like he did see. pick up the controller, and there was glitter trail leading to the PC. And the first trailer that Fable put out in 2020 was a fairy and fairy dust. So was the fairy the one who dropped it? Right. So people really get deep down in the conspiracy theories. Okay. But then you have to look at it and ask yourself, would the Xbox social team be required to tease a game? Right. Would the marketing department basically say, hey, Josh Stein, we need you to make a tease for the showcase, but include f- subtle fable references, right? Because you have to you have to ask yourself: Would the social team know what's actually going to be at the showcase? Would they know that fables there? Were they told to just make it fable esque and be like, "Hey, or use this music"? Nah, eh, maybe, maybe not. Um, now, personally, I don't think I don't think the social team knows the show. I no, I don't think so either. But I could imagine someone like Josh Stein being in a high enough position potentially to know the show, or at least know aspects of it, right? Because they have to get together all the different um, assets, all the different assets, you know, that he's going to use, just like they use for after the PlayStation Showcase. Those just don't pop up out of thin air. People have to create those, and they have to spend time. And there's Xbox mm-hmm. Newswire posts that are written well in advance, right? Not necessarily the day before, so. You got to think about that, right? Did Aaron Greenberg whisper, be like, tease Fable, and then kind of like go <laughs> off and do whatever? Uh, because, you know, we've always talked about Microsoft uh, shooting themselves in the foot sometimes, right, Jez? Sometimes stepping they're just, on rakes. They're stepping, stepping on, on the rakes, rakes making, making mistakes that are unforced. Like nobody made them say, hey, we're going to do a 12 month show last year. Nobody made them do it, they decided to do it themselves. And they didn't deliver. And I know people were like, Rand, come on, uh, you, you can't hold them to it. But I mean, even Phil Spencer said at the kind of funny interview with Gary, Snowbike Mike, and Paris that we didn't deliver. You got to hold us to it, right? Mm-hmm. So nobody forced them to do it. It was something they did themselves, and they paid the price. They, they eventually paid the price for it because Starfield and Forza Motorsport and our history untold didn't launch in that time frame. Will they be paying the same price here? Because now all the fans expect Fable. Everybody's talking about Fable. All the websites are talking about Fable. It's Fable this and Fable that. If it's not there, people are going to be incredibly disappointed. And who are they going to take it out on? And normally a lot of people take it out on quote-unquote insiders, right? Because with this latest PlayStation Showcase... that, That veiled... Was that a veil? Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying big? it's not necessarily at you. <laughs> not necessarily at you. Although you did do a lot to hype up this latest PlayStation Showcase, Bro, right? I, I, I enjoyed it. I know you I did. Know you're, you're talking about. I thought it was okay. My, 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 my thing is that 
the PlayStation Showcase was hyped up from insiders. Not just you, but other people. And it didn't deliver for a lot of people. And then it's so... A great show, man. Great show. So, for you know, Xbox. people get upset at... <laughs> People get upset at you for your tweets. They get upset at Grub for his tweets. They might get upset at Tom Henderson or whatever. Uh, anybody that's uh, there are a couple other people on Twitter that made vague sort of uh, promises that didn't happen. And it's like you raised my expectations. This is your fault. But if Fable's not there, there is no blaming insiders or whatever because it's basically you're going to be people are going to blame Microsoft for it. So. The thing is, in my it, it, the way I think about it is like this. Microsoft clearly sees the sentiment around that tweet, around the whole Fable stuff. Clearly sees it. They're very tuned into what's going on in social media. They know that people are expecting Fable. They can see all the articles. They know what people are talking about. And if I was Microsoft and I knew Fable wasn't at that show, I would come out and put my foot down. I'd be Mm. like, listen, we love all the excitement around the showcase. We love the community and their passion. But we just want to set expectations and say Fable's not going to be there. Playground Games is working really hard to deliver the best Fable game you've ever played. You know, hire me for PR. I know what I'm doing. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so, so you're saying you're saying the fact that they didn't come out and deny all the articles. I never saw any of those articles. I guess I was so heads down on Diablo because you know we we ain't got a very big team, so we really we really do have to pick our battles sometimes. And um, that that was just one thing I saw, and it's just like that that don't mean nothing. So I was just like skip that. We often skip these kind of rumor mill posts, even though I know it probably would have got clicks. Maybe we should have covered it. I don't know, but i I don't like to, I don't like to inject hype where I'm not sure that there is any reason to be hyped. Because, like, you know, I did hear things about the PlayStation Show that didn't pan out, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but you know, I don't know if Fable's there or not right now, so I, I don't want to. I don't want to suggest. I'm putting up in a one poll. way or the other. Right. I'm putting up a poll. Do you believe the Xbox social team? is teasing Fable, and we have two answers here. Absolutely or no way? Uh, so I wanna, oh, wow. Well, that sells that argument, I think. I want to see what the people think. Do you think they're teasing it? Um, mm. So, yeah, part of me is like, all right, well, they haven't come out and said no because this is just going to lead to the inevitable disappointment if it's not there, and Microsoft would only really have them... I mean, out of all the music you could choose for that post, you choose music very similar to Fable, it's odd choice. Uh, granted, uh, I do think Fable's there. <laughs> so that's, 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 a, that's a peek <laughs> at one of my, one of my uh, predictions for the show. I've been talking about Fable being at the showcase now for like two months. I, I've talked about how I think you're going to see a, a couple of the games from 2020 show up and fable was one of those games. I've, I've talked about this repeatedly and this isn't any inside information. This is just a gut feeling that fable will be there in some manner. In fact, you can probably even, I've been going back and forth about what's going to open and start to close the show. In one scenario, I have fable opening the show, surprising everybody. And then another scenario, I have fable closing the show, right? But I do think Fable is there. But it's not because of the tease on Twitter. It was just thinking about stuff Microsoft could show, thinking about the things Phil said uh, in answer to Paris's question about the games that you know they announced in 2020, thinking about how how weird it would be for a game to be announced and then not see anything for it for four years unless it was going through some major problems like Everwild getting rebooted and and things like that. I'd be like, okay, well, I think Fable's going to be there. And if it's not, well, then I'm just going to disappoint myself. But I do think it is. That, But that's just me. Jez? I mean, man, I, I'm just not sure. I don't want to say, I don't want to say like for definite they're hyping it up with the tweet and 
the fact that they're not talking about it means it's definitely going to be there. True, true. Because I kind of feel like they've, they've, maybe they're distracted even right now. I don't know. So I don't, I don't want to, because things I say seem to carry weight. Yeah, yeah. And after the, pla- after the place, yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah. Nobody I, cares what I say. Run. Nobody cares what I, I say. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, nah, people care what you say, bro. But after the PlayStation showcase, everyone was all mad at me because I, I, I was like, yeah, yep you know i've heard i'm hearing good things but this time i'm being more cautious i'm being like oh don't know about that you know i want people coming at me if the, if fable's not there after i've said that maybe it will be there that being said that being said ran it does seem like there's evidence to suggest that it could be there because you know you had matt booty last year talking about them wanting to show it last year mm-hmm. yeah and there were rumors that it was gonna be shown there and it they decided not to at some point so if it was at a place where they could have potentially shown it last year and now we're and also you've got xbox sort of like i don't want to say in the doldrums but they're sort of like i don't know they've been criticized a lot recently for the way xbox is being handled so like if there's if there's one way you could brain that back in a little bit maybe you show Fable, you know. So I honestly think it could, you know, it could go either way at the end of the day. But I don't know. I will let I will let that be your prediction because you know, <laughs> it could go, go either way. I mean, Matt Booty, here's exactly what Matt Booty said. He said, part of my job is to give air cover to the team. They don't want to show stuff early before it's ready to go. But if there's one game where that's kind of flipped around, where every time I see something, I say, we should show this. It's Fable, because there's a lot of cool stuff. But the team has made it clear that I am not going to be able to show anything until it's ready. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, sounds like he wanted, like Jess said, he wanted to show it last year. And Playground was like, uh, 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 not yet. You know, and uh, could a full uh, uh. calendar year change things? Where it's like, all right, we're a year later. Maybe the game's in a good state. We've seen some sort of LinkedIn job listings where... They're sort of, I want to say the word flighting, but they're they're doing testing for stakeholders. So it's possible that they're in a state where they feel comfortable, like everything's locked in, the game's in full production, whereas before was kind of pre-production. And all right, we can we can sort of we can we can show, you know, something. We can show an in-game overview, a cinematic, you know more than just one minute CGI trailer that was just basically a fairy and a frog and what else did you really get from it? We can go we can show a little bit more. Um so mm. I don't know. I think I think Fable's gonna be there. Um yeah. so And I, it'll be in engine not it, necessarily Maybe yeah. maybe some quick snippets of gameplay here and there, like fa- like some quick quick cuts, but yeah, I'm I'm expecting uh in engine is is what in my mind what it would be. Fast. But well, it does seem we'll like see. nobody really knows the show this time around. Um, yeah. Which I, it, can say, I can say, I can only speak for myself, and I don't really know. I, I mean, I believe the. I mean, this isn't even my rumor, but like the, I believe the Persona stuff. I mean, the the gameplay of that thing leaked from one of Sega's own events a few weeks months ago, and you know, this this you know the the guy who talked about on Reset Era has been correct before about atlas kind of leaks so i kind of believe that persona runa pers- rumor personally and then we obviously know starfield's going to be there because microsoft themselves have talked about it but beyond that pretty much don't know that much i know a couple of things but... a couple of things but just a couple of things out of a whole mountain of things right yeah it's it's, it's there's gonna just... be do us all it's a favor. A of, do us all a favor. Yeah, I don't know that thing. Please don't tweet about how the show is going to be fired beforehand. We don't want you to reverse jinx it like you did PlayStation. <laughs> I reverse jinxed PlayStation. That's that's a new one. <laughs> you know, because yeah, I, ain't, I ain't saying a damn thing about this show, man. I ain't saying it. Well, I've got to do predictions article next week. Yes, but I I ain't, ain't going to overhype anything because I'm just in the dark, man. Well, just if you I'm guys if you dark. guys want to showcase leak, I'm sure Tom Henderson will got you covered. And Tom Henderson will probably leak the show or talk about the show a, a, a day or not. two before the, before the showcase, right? I hope not, because I think that'd be kind of 
disappointing. But I think it's I think it is fun when these kind of events don't get spoiled. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Surprises. Yeah. You know how 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 crazy would that uh, surprise would have been for the Kojima partnership if it wasn't basically talked about for over a year? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the snitch. <clears throat> he could potentially leak stuff. So. I mean, no, I suppose I did leak the Wondering Tower, and I'm pretty sure I would, I would bet money that Wondering Tower is going to be there. That's not based on anything I've heard. It's just the development timelines seem to line up there. I think a little bit. Right. But um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So uh, we got Gunstar. He's back. He says hello. I'm not dead. Still love you guys. Well, we love you, Gunstar. Where you been? Hey, welcome back, buddy. Yeah. Gunstar's awesome. Skill and pen penage. Says, actually managed to catch you guys live. Always catch you on my commute come Monday. The Xbox 2 actively making me look for traffic. You know how many people have, like will DM me or message me saying, I love listening to your show when I'm going to work or whatever, or I'm at work. It makes the day go by so quick. You know, because the show's like <laughs> half a work day almost if you listen from beginning to end. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really <laughs> think of it that way, but... Yeah, we go along sometimes. Sometimes it's all Rand's fault. It is. It is my fault. It, it, well, no, it's it's we we me and Jazz can both go on tangents. We yeah, we, we definitely we, can. Yes. We can definitely just talk and talk and talk. And I actually Rand's hate the tangent master. No, no, no. You're the tangent. You're the tangent master, not me. I always keep it direct and focused on what we're talking about. Uh, I guess maybe I'm just used to that to making vid- videos and then, like expanding kind of what I'm talking about to get a video a certain length or something. Uh, we have Mr. J says, Random thought. No Modern Warfare 2 PS exclusive lately and no COD news at the PlayStation Showcase makes you wonder what Sony and Activision relationship is right now. I mean, I think we kind of know that their relationship isn't in a good place, right? I mean, Lulu's talked about it. Bobby's had interviews about it where... He'd be like, normally we're on the phone talking about future collaborations and they're not even picking up the phone. So I would imagine their relationship isn't in the best spot currently. Yeah. I mean, it'll 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 flip around. Of course it will. I mean, they make, PlayStation makes so much damn money from Call of Duty and Activision makes so much man, damn money from Call of Duty So uh, on PlayStation. So, you know... That, that'll sort things out, and now we've got like uh, the whole sort of um, I don't know the whole the the concern quote unquote concern that PlayStation could be disrupted by the deal. That's been thrown out by pretty much every regulator now, except maybe the FTC. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting if uh, the FTC holds on to that one. Uh, we have X Don the Otaku. My one hundred percent accurate showcase prediction is that nothing Xbox will show or measure up to Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, wait, this is my ex- Xbox account. <laughs> <laughs> well, Xbox could not put on a show, and it would be better than Tears of the Kingdom. So, <laughs> I mean... Oh, uh, Rand with the spice. They with can, the sauce. Yeah. Those, those guys, they, they could show nothing, and it would be better than Tears of the Kingdom. Wow. I'm sorry. I, I can go all day. Crazy like this don when you go back and forth about <laughs> nintendo i could go back and forth all day oh man uh brett bingham says shadow drop for forza turn 10 has been starting to reveal things like cover art seems like it's closer to release than we might think uh i think people got to get shadow drops out of their mind because like a shadow drop for i don't know forza is a nah, game that's been announced I, and been marketed it's not a shadow i've drop. got a i've I've got a shadow drop prediction that I'll drop later. Okay. Um, I, I have one shadow drop prediction that that I'm 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 gonna die on that hill. Okay, we'll you're gonna die that. on this. Isn't gonna be like just a a random. Okay, I think it could. You're gonna die on this hill. That's interesting. That's okay. I'm gonna die on it, bro. I'm gonna die on it. That's not a. It's not a leak. It's just I just I just feel it in my waters. My waters, baby. Okay. Well, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I don't think I don't think uh I don't think Motorsport will be shadow dropped. I think they have an internal date. I mean, we already know that it's going to be at the extended showcase with a single player uh demo of sorts. So I mean, that kind of goes against the whole shadow drop thing. And I think mm-hmm. it's launching after Starfield. I think it's launching 
like October time, essentially. Didn't Mr. Matty Plays? Yeah, yeah, he did. Mr. Matty Plays had a report, a rare report from Mr. Matty Plays. He said he'd heard it was going for October, and I'm inclined to believe that. That's not that's not my information. That's Mr. Matty's information, but I believe I believe it, and I think I think October seems good for me. Yeah, October seems great. You got Starfield in September. You got Forza Motorsport in October. Crossing fingers for like what Hellblade in November, Contraband in December type thing. Although that's probably completely unrealistic. You yeah, know? I, I don't think you see Contraband this year, personally. Oh, you don't. Well, well you can save that for your predictions, Jazz. You got, you got to save that. Well, okay, okay. But I mean, okay, you know, okay, I'm yeah. just saying, like, I'm very keen to find out when Hellblade Two is coming. You're like, could they have three months? Where all right, we got three three big games because I also wonder how the ABK stall has affected their plans because they thought the deal would be done by the end of June, right? When they uh, did the deal, because they thought that yeah. like okay, so then Call of Duty would be theirs. This year's Call of Duty would be theirs. Maybe they could or they couldn't put it in Game Pass in November because I believe Tom Henderson has leaked that the new Call of Duty is coming November tenth. I believe. But it would be a first-party game this time around, even if it's not in Game Pass. So it's like, okay, that could be plan A. And maybe you don't want to put one of the other games around Call of Duty at that point. But what, let me ask you this, Jazz. What are the likelihood, what are the odds that the deal's done this year and when Call of Duty comes out in the fall, November, that it's technically a first-party game at that point, that the deal's closed and it's theirs? What do you... Th- what are the chances, percentage-wise, you think that that is, could happen or might happen? Well, I mean, we're going to talk about this as well in more detail in a minute, but the current report is that Microsoft's looking for ways to close the deal. Um, you know, what, what would be the legal ramifications of them closing the deal without the CMA? You know, so I think they're exploring... They really want to close this deal before the um the 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 merger period ends so like if if the deal isn't done by july 15th i want to say off the top of my head it's so it's somewhere in the middle of the july activision and microsoft have to renegotiate everything they have to renegotiate the price they have to go back to shareholders and get them to approve it again and then we have to go through this whole pro this whole load of bullshit waiting for for the legal stuff to the appeals and whatnot to pan out. Now the CMA did say that they the the CAT sorry the CAT did say that they want to get this judicial hearing through quickly in weeks rather than months because the CMA was like we want to stall this for months but the CAT was like now nah, we're going to do it in weeks. So I think Microsoft's exploring the possibility of just being like screw it we will close the deal you know, and we'll deal with the ramifications later. And I've, I've been saying for a few weeks, like I, I have no faith in the CMA or the pro the UK's regulatory process, but I think like, I think the deal will close and it'll just be a mess. Microsoft will have to pay a fine. There'll be some kind of legal battle over the fine and it'll just be a big mess, but I think the deal will ultimately close. And, um, and maybe there'll be years of legal battles over it. I don't know, but I think it's going to be a mess and I think it will close. So yes, I do think Call of Duty will be first party. This year's Call of Duty. I think it will be, yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. That's, a, that's my prediction. Uh, Tom, Tom Henderson has a request for you, Jez, by the way. Oh, yes. He says, oh, Jez, Tom. can you say something like, quote, I've been told X game is coming, but it's not 100% yet, so I can write an article. Today's traffic is low. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think I can, actually. I don't think I can. Um, <laughs> if you want to get some traffic, Tom, I mean, you should write about the reactions of WinRAR to RAR being baseline in Windows 11 because, my, believe it or not, my number one article round of the year so far. The year, the, the entire, whole entire year. Yeah, the entire year is a news post I wrote the other day, which I doubt anyone here read, which was... This was WinRAR's reaction to Windows 11 getting native RAR support. And that, that <laughs> article is like, like 100,000 hits. And I don't think I've written any article that's gotten that much traffic in that short space of time in a really long time. So you never know. It's going to blow up, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is how X reacts. It seems to do well on Google search. I don't know. 
don't know, but. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got any leaks, man. I ain't got any leaks for y'all. Tom says this Not podcast is a joke. We're just trying to help you out, buddy. <laughs> Tom, we're just trying to help yeah. you out. You know, right you about know, WinRaw, man. No, that's how you get the clicks. Just write about that you have information regarding an Xbox Series X2 or an XL or something and be like, Microsoft is entering the field into mid gen upgrades as well. I'm sure that article would do gangbusters, right? Yeah. I mean, it. It's probably true. I mean, yeah, maybe if you it just, is. It, if you, if you, even if you just make it up, the chances of it coming true are pretty high. I would say so. Take take a risk, bro. Take a risk. You notice you notice how you notice how Tom <laughs> said he wanted you to say something, basically saying like it doesn't matter what I say. Because even Tom's like, who the fuck is Randall Thor nineteen? <laughs> but everybody knows everybody knows who Jess Corden is because he can write an art. Jess Corden, Windows Central, you know. Mortal Kombat fans didn't apologize to you. PlayStation fans didn't apologize to you. Now, if I say something that I do know and I play it off where it's like, no, this is actually happening, Tom wouldn't even write the article because I'm a nobody. I'm just a silly YouTuber, you know? Well, dude, but, yeah. you always frame your leaks as predictions. <laughs> yeah, well, and you you, you always you always say like, oh, I'm not an insider, but I predict X, Y, Z that comes true to the letter in a few weeks. I remember one time you were like, I can't remember when it was like a few, a couple of, a couple of years ago, you was, you said something like, I predict this game will launch on this exact date, but it's just a prediction. It's just a prediction. And you were right. Man. And I'm sitting there thinking, Oh yeah. R- Rand's out here trying to t- teach people that he's psychic. or something. Sometimes you just, <laughs> you just land on the right dates. It's happened before, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, think about man. it. When you look at dates, it only really could be Tuesdays or Fridays, you know. So it's only two days out of. The, it's only a couple Diablo days out of the month. Th- what day did Diablo launch on? Uh, it, Thursday it it would be what uh, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday. I guess Friday. Yeah, thir- six, yeah, it launched six, on a one, Thursday. Six two, six so that, two. Yeah, so that blows that argument out of the water. Diablo mm. launched on a Thursday. That's weird. Well, I don't know. Danaro Maybe says, you are just talking about "Man it, has the most popular Xbox podcast yet is still unknown." How does that work? Um, <laughs> It's because this is Jez Corden's podcast. Everybody, Jez Corden's Xbox 2. I'm just a footnote. Even Tom says, I seriously didn't even knew who, know who Rand was until about three months ago. Even now I'm confused. See? <laughs> We've been doing this show for six months. It's it's always been Jez Corden's Xbox 2. And I'm just the guy who interviews him every 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 week. So Don't be silly. Well, the pro- I think one of the issues is that Xbox A... There ain't that many, podcasts ain't that mainstream, you know. Not not a huge amount of people listen to podcasts in general, and then well, B, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not as popular as like Genshin Impact, is it? Well, sure, but I mean, like you got Joe Rogan, you got Bill Simmons, you got all the people. You know, I mean, Spotify wouldn't yeah, be doing those like, deals for. That's like comparing an indie band to like Radiohead or something. Okay, right? okay. Uh, but then you've got like Xbox, and Xbox isn't that big, so it's just it's like a, a niche of a niche kind of situation. But it doesn't matter because I love our community, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't care. I don't care if we we we, we don't get millions of subscribers like PewDiePie. We have the best damn community on the internet. Mm. The XB2 community, baby. I said six Sponsored months, six years. We we've been doing six <laughs> doing this podcast now for six years. So, six years. Okay. Yeah, six years is a long time. Long time. I've only have we really been doing it for six years? I've only yeah, been we started, we started, for eight years. We started April of twenty seventeen, the week that Digital Foundry revealed the specs of the Xbox One X was our first episode. All the way back, um, April twenty seventeen. So six years. We're over six years. Two hundred and sixty eight episodes. Probably should be higher because there are some weeks we, you know, scheduling and things like that where we can't do the show. Yeah. But yeah, um we've been doing this for a while now. Did I leak? Did I leak the Xbox One X? I can't Jeez, remember. Are you okay? What's going on over there? Oh man, it's because I got the window <laughs> open. I, I live on a main road, right? I've explained this before, but when when I'm in England at my parents' place visiting my family, I, I'm on a main road, and every single police car uses this road to get to wherever they're going. So even if there's like even if there's like nothing going on here. You always get the the sirens. Maybe I should close the window, but it's really, really warm. No, no, it's, it's fine. It's warm. fine. I was just like, what is this? I'm Grand sweating. Theft Auto? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm come... sweating, bro. And I, I, the I don't Microsoft have my Ninja here. Ninjas has finally come to you to get you for for leaking all the stuff. <laughs> they sent out the the, yeah. the police to come get you, bring you in. Oh man, I don't 
don't know. We'll uh, see. We have. Uh, I, I, well, I'm, I can tell you one thing. I'm, I'm glad we cover Xbox and not Nintendo because if we, if we did cover Nintendo, then yeah, it would be the police coming for me. Yeah, Probably. they would. The... <laughs> Nintendo's lawyers don't fuck around, man. That's... No, no, we got to be careful. We both used, we both used the F word so far. That's two. I don't know if we can use them again. You know, gotta keep that um, in mind. Remember? Damn. YouTube need, is very strict an... with their, with their, with their swearing policy. Well, we need a, we need an alternative to the F word then. I don't know. We'll have to think of one. Exton the Otaku the, what, says, uh, it'll be over one one hour and 30 minutes of scale bomb. Well, there's your official scale bomb mention. And uh, <laughs> Sin Vendetta is here. He says, Rand, feel free to pass along your invite to FanFest to any of us. Just saying. I mean, if I... How do I say this? Uh, I didn't actually get... I would have been invited as press, essentially. Um, uh-huh. But when they asked me if I was going to be there... This year, I said no. So I didn't technically get the invite. If I told him I was going to be there, I would have gotten the invite, but I I knew I wasn't going to go. So I didn't go. And they knew that. You should have come, man. Yeah, well, well you, but at the time, but, but at the go. time, you weren't going to go, right? And it was just like, oh, it's just a watch party. So I was like, eh, it's a lot of money to spend flying from Chicago, getting a hotel, all that stuff. You know, I'm not getting I'm, the private jet out of store. I'm not Paris, where I live there, and it's just like a hop, skip, and a jump. You know, he can just walk down the street and uh, just show up there. It's like, oh, well, I got to mm-hmm. gotta get on a four-hour flight. I mean, you got to, what, get on a 10-hour flight? Yeah, I've got it. Well, including the, the – that's the second leg. So, like, I'm flying to France first, which is, like, 90, 90 minutes. And then – so, yeah, it's more like a 12-hour flight. It's going to be yeah. – oh, it's going to be hard. But we do it. We do it for the peeps. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Bob says do you think special nick is right about a skies of arcadia remaster coming uh i maybe i mean i don't know i think you might be right about that one but i mean special nick i roasted him on twitter yesterday nobody uh, should be uh, taking him seriously you know what, what did you say well because it sort of came out that that starfield controller is legit that leaked earlier in the year which uh-huh. we, we were like that looks too detailed to be a fake that has to be real. And it looks like it is real. And Special Nick said, let me let me get my tweet out. Cause because I wrote I mean you want to talk about that ratio. I ratioed poor poor Nick. And he's probably not even here to hear it, but I'm sure somebody will actually get back to him. Where he's <laughs> Nick goes, I have absolutely less than zero interest in Starfield, but I'm gonna buy the shit out of that controller. Lol. Right? Because he buys a lot of that stuff. And he got one ret- one retweet, one quote. 145 likes and then I slide in and I say, but I'll fix that for you. (laughs) And I said, I have absolutely less than zero interest in Xbox games, but I'm going to make sure I'm the host of an Xbox podcast. Lol. (laughs) (laughs) And I had like 36 Uh, replies, 24, 24 retweets, 578 likes. But the thing is, Nick, I'm not saying anything that nobody doesn't know. Nick has admitted this as much on his own Xbox show. He doesn't care about Xbox games at all, period. He's just a fan of the ecosystem. No, no, no. He doesn't care about Fable or Forza or Gears. Any of them. All he plays is Rocket League and uh, <laughs> whatever else. And that's it. But he's the Cold host night. of an Xbox podcast. But he doesn't like any Xbox games. How does that Dude, work? I don't know. Ask him. I, I'm, I'm almost in the same boat. I mean, I, I, obviously I care about Bethesda games, but before that, I didn't really care about Forza. I didn't really care about Halo. So I was like, kind of like a terrible Xbox fan, you know? Didn't care about Flight Simulator, really. But I've always cared about my Gears. And now that I've got Bethesda, then yeah, I care a lot more now. But yeah, the, the classic Xbox games that everyone, everyone stands for, like, like even stuff like 1 vs. 100, never played it. Never played it. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, everyone's always, I get DMs every week, at least at least one about one versus one hundred. Is that game coming back? Is that game coming back? Fable as well. Don't really care about Fable. Yeah, but you will care about Fable. You will. Yeah, maybe you will. I didn't care about the other ones, but I'm I'm intrigued to see what Playground comes up with. But hey, yeah, well, not everybody likes the Todd Howard brand of RPG. That is true. I've discovered. That I've is discovered. True. Uh, shocking shocking i know but. crazy g14 says could we get a fable remastered collection in a new engine prior to the new fable i mean i i, I suppose it's a possibility you know if you're gonna have a fable and 
I think come out in 2025, why not launch a Fable collection so people can experience the franchise like in 2024 or something? That was um that was one of my defining Duke oh, predictions, wasn't, wasn't it? Do you remember? Uh yeah, yeah. was think, it was it your shadow drop well, or just your prediction? No, 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 that wasn't my shadow drop, but one of we were talking about the Gears collection, I think. Yes. And I was like well, the Gears collection, eh, doesn't really that make that much sense for me still. But what does make sense for me is a Fable collection. Because people were talking about, um, I think Phil or someone in an interview talked about a collection. Collection of games, he? yeah. He, it was, yeah, collection he, of games. He made that, I don't know if it was a mistake, but he definitely said that during the kind of funny interview and people kind of like, oh, collection of games, Probably. what does he mean? Does he just mean all the games coming at the end of the year? Does he mean... A Gears collection, a Fable collection, you know. Mm. So yeah, there's a lot of speculation around yeah. that. I was kind of, I was kind of like, you know, if you if you're launching Fable and you've got a whole generation of people who never played it, maybe a Fable collection makes more sense. You know, I only play, I only played Fable two. I never, I never played uh, Fable three. I skipped that because I didn't really like Fable two that much, and I never had Fable one. So. I uh, I'm fable a fable gnostic. Right I mean, now. I played all the I played Fable One, Fable Two, Fable Three, Fable Pub Games, Fable Heroes. I even played uh, Fable the Journey, the Connect game. I even played Fable Legends with Phil. <laughs> uh, what before that game got shut down? So I played all I played a bunch played all the Fable games. So I am a Man. big I'm a big fan of the franchise. I think Fable Two is my favorite. Fair enough. Um, Fable Two is definitely yeah. my favorite. So, but I, I didn't hate Fable Two. I mean, I quite I play I played mostly with the gun and the headshots were quite satisfying. I feel like I remember that was the one with um, the dog, right? Where you your yeah, dog, dog with you. Yeah. yeah, the dog was really cool. I remember Pete Mullen you on stage talking about how smart the dog was, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, oh, good old Peter Molyneux. Molyneux. Yeah. What, what, a, what a guy. What yeah, a so guy. I mean, I could see a Fable collection being a thing at some, yeah. at some point. Uh, That's one of my predictions, Fable collection. Yes. We have uh, somebody calling me and telling me to stop doing the show. Uh, but we it's have uh, Scott Gamerdew says, Diablo has cross-play and cross-save between PC and Xbox, right? Wish they had a bundle that lets you buy it and you can get both like to play anywhere. Does it have cross-play and cross-save between PC and Xbox, Jez? Yes, it does. It has cross progression and cross play. So you just sign in with your Battle.net account, and then like you log into Diablo on your PC and your Xbox. It's just your Xbox stuff is right there like magic. But um, it doesn't have cross buy because let's face it, this is Activision we're talking about here. And me, like a sucker, I have bought the game twice because uh, that's that's how we roll. That's how we do it. So um, yeah, so um. I also bought the game for my brother, so I bought the game three times. <laughs> I bought the I bought the I bought the the deluxe edition three times. So um, and I bought cosmetics. I'm sorry, everyone. I've, I'm ruining the game industry. Um, but but yeah, there's no, there's no cross there's no cross buy. But I think that'll change when when Xbox when Microsoft comes in because I really think one of the things they're going to be looking to do is tie the Xbox ecosystem to their PC ecosystem more. And as we see already. We've already got um, we've already got Microsoft. All of Microsoft games have Xbox Play Anywhere. You know, Xbox Play Anywhere is cross cross buy. So you buy it on you buy it on Xbox. You also get it on uh, PC, but you also get the the cloud saves, right? So um, I love Xbox Play Anywhere. I use it all the time on my Steam Deck and stuff like that. So I hope that's one thing Microsoft looks to expand when they do get that their claws into Activision. And we start seeing some of the more cross cross buy action because, man, it's it's not cheap buying Diablo twice <laughs> and other games. Oh well, but then again, if people do it, that's that's yeah, that's why they do it because people do do it. Man, I hate myself. I hate myself. I'm ruining the industry, Ryan. You are. Fault. You are. Have you? Uh, did you? Have you told? You might have just said this because I got a message on my phone, so I wasn't paying attention. Uh, but did you have you mentioned that you're already spent money on microtransactions? Yeah, I did. Okay. I said that. Uh, yeah, I bought. I bought cosmetics. I bought horse armor. Oh, okay. Horse armor. I, I I was I was seeing it and I was like, 
we've come we've we've literally come full circle. Yes. Todd Howard selling the horse armor and now Diablo selling the horse armor. We've come full circle. We have. And yes, I will I will buy it. I will buy it. So yeah, GG. I've ruined I've ruined everything. You've ruined everything. But yeah. it lo- it looks cool though, man. It look it looks it looks cool, bro. Uh, well, I guess that's all that matters. Blame Jazz. For, you can't blame me. I don't buy this sort of stuff. I don't buy cosmetics. I don't like. You can't blame me for the fall of video uh, of the video game industry or the rise of microtransactions. Blame people like Jazz. But at huh? least it's not pay to win, right? Sure. It's not okay. like let me ask you this like question. Genshin Impact, where you can spend fifteen grand and still not get. Let me ask you this game. question though. Okay. okay. Overwatch and all the time you've played Overwatch, how much money have you spent on? overwatch currency to get skins and stuff i'm curious ah, now you, you see okay that's different oh uh, is it do you know why why because you can turn microsoft reward points into overwatch coins so i haven't bought a single battle pass because i oh ran's ran's gonna fk now but yes um i don't know if people in chat know this but you can turn microsoft reward points directly into overwatch coins so I haven't bought a single battle pass, not a single one, which is awesome. But unfortunately, that doesn't work with Diablo. So let's just wait for Ran to get back. Yeah, sorry about that. My yeah. uh, sis- I was just my sister's flying in today, so it's kind of like getting information about her flight and most of her stuff would be delayed and whatever. So sorry. It's okay. I was just saying that I, I don't buy. I'll edit. I'll edit this when we when we put it on the audio, but. I was just saying that I don't buy Overwatch microtransactions because you can use Microsoft reward points to buy Overwatch microtransactions. So I haven't bought a single battle pass and bought any cosmetics because you can just Bing search to get the currency for that game. I, I hope they... I wonder if they're going to do that for Diablo as well. I need to look into that. Right. Uh, uh, John Messi says, was that Project Keystone next to the TV in the Fable teaser? Um... I don't think so. I, I'm trying to I even. Don't think so. Yeah, no. I mean, we've seen it in Phil's shelf, but I doubt it. Uh, DB Cooper says, "I try to stay positive, but that if that isn't a fable reference, Xbox is as tone deaf as the TV, TV, TV show." Even says trail of glitter. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what I said. Is it's like, well, if it's not there, then you would think they would come out and say that it's not there to, pe- you know. But we'll find out. I mean. Mm-hmm. Thanero says, for some reason, some publishers like to try to release games during the anniversary year. You think Fable will rush to hit that 20th next year? Oh, is Fable's 20th anniversary next year? That would be what, 2020? Yeah, I think Fable did come out in 2024, huh? 20 or years? 2004. Oh my God. So 20 years? I feel old, man. I mean... I feel really old. I still don't think Fable is going to make a 2024 release, but... Maybe you could do a Fable collection in 2024 for, you know, the... Well, they already did. Fable or, an, they did Fable Anniversary. They could yeah, do they Fable did. Anniversary collection. Yeah. Because well, they're, they're, they're all on Real Engine games, right? I think. All of them are. Unless I'm going um, mad. I don't know. I'm not sure what know. engine they use. But, Jez, do you want to find out the, the poll results here? So, yes. we put up this hey, poll about 35 poll, minutes it? ago. It's got 1,100 votes. Do you believe the Xbox social team is teasing Fable? 78% say absolutely. 22% say no way. So. Damn. Well, I guess that settles that then. Yeah. That's... Xbox is screwed if Fable's not there. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, there yeah. you go. Uh, Space Dovakin says, so basically that's a pre-approved L. Yeah. Ron Richards Jr. says, any Tatanka updates, Jez? Do you have anything about Halo in 343? Nope. nope. Not a damn thing. I, I'm completely in the dark. On Tatanka now. Um, I used to have some sources about Tatanka, but that's the thing about the industry. Like, there's so much churn, people moving around to different studios constantly, back and forth, you know. So I don't really have good information about Tatanka anymore. But um, a lot of it was leaking via the Halo API, which is hilarious. It always cracks me up when Microsoft leaks their own stuff through their mm. APIs. Um, but, you know, the, the last. Um, they've seemed to have locked that down as well lately. Like it's it's harder to get leaks via data mining the public public APIs for their different platforms. So yeah, I'm in the dark, man. I'm in the dark. Okay. Unless someone in ch- someone listening wants to drop me an email. <laughs> you never know. I mean, that has never proven know. true. People have 
message you after the show about stuff after we yeah. do shows or after you even tweet something people will people will hit you up with info uh alvin says it's overly illogical to think that wasn't a direct fable tease it's been trending for four days and no one has come out to downplay speculation uh big for man 14 would y'all rather have Scalebound come back or have pokemon come to xbox oh jesus christ save me <laughs> uh, i mean i'd rather have pokemon come to xbox because even then it's not like i have to play it um so i'd be perfectly fine with that i you know, with all the scale bond talk coming back, I just wanted to stay dead. Just to, you know, I'm I'm very much f- for my peeps. I very much want Banjo to come back for you guys. But you know what? With all the scale bond stuff, screw it. Let scale bond stay dead. I don't care about my scale bond bros. Bro, I don't care about them that? anymore. You've driven me wow. to this point. I hope scale bond stays dead forever. And in fact, I am shocked. Yeah, I don't know what I was going to say after that, but. I have no love for the Scalebound Bros anymore. <laughs> Ran's on his heel, heel arc now. Uh, my, my villain arc, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Drawn TJ saying, I want to see Fable. I mean, so do I. I'm right there with you. Uh, 100% want to see Fable. Uh, Brett says, Ran, I don't think Microsoft has that sh- short of a memory of stepping on rakes. I think Fable or Fable Collection will be there. I mean... I also think Fable will be there, so we'll have to see. Uh, Lee T. Sanders said, I personally think it's a Fable collection. Very well could be. Uh, AAG Vantis says, I'm probably one of the very few who want Final Fantasy XIV as a port for the Xbox. But the games I want are Persona 3 Remake, SMT uh, 5 port, Avowed, Hellblade, and Fable. Also, shout out to the AAG boys. I know, Jez, you you want Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, you've been, you've been talking about that for years. Really good. It's a really fun game. It's very, you know, nice casual MMO. You know, not not as serious or or hardcore as the Goat World of Warcraft, but it's fun. It's all right. It's not yeah. bad. Adigator says, "Will we see the Fallout TV series at the Xbox Showcase?" I heard it finished filming back in March. <laughs> oh God, no! This was God, this no. is kind of one of my like funny sort of things, like because Maddie asked us if we would see anything Fallout related at the show, right? Mm. And I said, what if we saw a trailer for the Fallout TV show? <laughs> <laughs> because, oh you know, I mean, putting putting trailers for, for movies and putting trailers for TV shows is a thing. And I think PlayStation might have started a trend. Microsoft could look at that and be like, hey, they're talking about Gran Turismo. We oh, have a Fallout true. TV show that's done. We have this chance to showcase Fallout TV everywhere. And then maybe even announce Fallout 4 next-gen update. Right? So you could you could do the, the first teaser trailer to Fallout and immediately then go into the trailer for the next-gen update of Fallout 4. Yeah. I mean, don't you guys want to see more TV and movies at Xbox and game showcases? I think everybody would want that, right? Ah, oh, man. I, I mean... If it looks amazing, if it looks amazing, then okay. But if it's just like going to be this, th- like the Gran Turismo thing, where it's just like, eh, I think leave it out, you know. But maybe if it leads into a game, that would be okay. Like I'll tell you what my shadow drop prediction was. What was? And it? this 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 isn't a leak. It's just a fun prediction. It's Fallout. The Fallout 4 HD remaster or whatever they're doing to it. Okay. That could be that could be the shadow drop. I mean, it could be. I personally think they'll launch it closer to the Fallout TV show so people could have something to go back to because you have this TV show and you don't have a new Fallout game until 2030 and Jazz will be old as, as sin by then. Right? For whatever <laughs> reason, you have you have this one of the biggest franchises out there and you're not going to basically have a game ready until the 2030s. It'll be, what, 15 years in between Fallout games, between Fallout 4 and, and the next Fallout game, uh, unless they get somebody on it quick. Now, to, to be honest, I don't think the Fallout TV show is going to be there. Like, that's just a joke. That's just a poor joke 
about, hey, if Sony can release a movie trailer at the show, why can't Xbox have a, a TV trailer, right? Uh, because I don't want to see TV or movie trailers at a game showcase at all, period. So please don't show the Fable thing. I mean, you could show Fallout. Or don't show the Fallout thing. You could show Fallout you know, for next-gen upgrade or whatever. But I don't want to see the TV show, please. God, I'm probably like <laughs> willed into existence at this point already. People will blame me. I'll get I'll get blamed for it. Um, I'll blame you for it. You will blame me for it. Mr. J says Elder Scrolls Six at the showcase. I'm gonna say no. I'm sure Jez agrees. Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't think so. Way too early. So. Uh, Installation Seven says, given how much Phil wanted Jet Set Radio Future in the Back and Pat program, I can see them announcing Sega's new Jet Set as a day one Game Pass title. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be big. Jet Set coming back is big. A uh, day one Game Pass title probably also would be significant. I don't. I could see them announcing it. I I can't see it being a Game Pass game though, unless they ended up buying Sega between now and then. But we'll see. Achievement. Y'all should play cassette beats on Game Pass. Have you heard about cassette cassette, cassette beats? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I've heard a lot of good things. It's kind of like a a sort of eighties affied pokemon by the sounds of it a lot of people say it's really good generally speaking like i don't really play the pokemon sort of inspired games but everyone says this is really good so maybe i'll give it a go at some point but right now it's all about one game and one game only rant yeah and that's diablo that is diablo uh space dovican ran that last game pass round was extremely weak there's definitely shadow drops in the showcase there's no way yeah I also, good point. I've I also heard thought that it was lot. lacking. Yeah. So they could, they could, they could have some stuff, new announcements. Yeah. Brett says, not saying it isn't pure coincidence, but the 24 hours of Le Mans is on June 10th to 11th. What's that? Is that a race or something? Uh, maybe. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Juan says, Jez is playing GTA six confirmed. I mean, it sounds like the, <laughs> they're playing it right outside his house. Jackal yeah. looks like they're announcing Keystone as well. That device next to the TV looks too small to be a Series S on that Fable tease. Oh, that's the second person that says just you should look at that tweet again, Jez, and see if it's a Series S or the Keystone. Just while we're maybe quick. it's a uh, maybe it's just the new Series S. Ooh, ooh, like a like, Series S Plus. Oh, all right, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Nick Prime says Destiny Two is fishing now, Jez. You going to play? Destiny 2 has fishing. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw saw this. Um, No. Even fishing can't save that game. (laughs) No, I'm joking. I don't know, I might check it out. My issue with Destiny is kind of like, I haven't played it much. And like, when you come in after not playing for a while, it's kind of like, what what do I do? You know, what what the hell do I go? What's the gameplay loop now? It's kind of like World of Warcraft has this problem as well. It's like, you need someone to teach you what's going on in the game. And I don't really have anyone like that right now. But again, it's another one of them. Like, if it ain't Diablo, it's not getting played anytime soon. Yeah. It's all about Diablo. It's all about the Diablo. I ain't any other game. Yeah. No, I'm probably going to just play Diablo until Starfield comes out, to be honest. (laughs) I mean, be prepared for every single episode of Xbox 2 for Jez to be playing Diablo 4. Yeah. Probably from now until the end of time until Diablo 5. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Dead Planet says, just curious, do you guys know anyone that has seen the whole show? And if you do... How are you not tempted to ask them for maybe one or two specifics? Uh, uh, I, I do know. I do know. But it's, that I, you know, they're under NDA. They can't talk about it at all. You know, so it's, and I would never ask them to violate an NDA as, as much as I'd love to know. But, but yeah, there are, there are, there are people I know who've seen the show and, you know. Or at least know what's in the show. Uh, nah, I know people who've seen the whole damn thing. Really? The whole damn thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah. But you wouldn't you wouldn't ask them to breach their confidentiality. No, never, never. I'd never ask that. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've talked to people that do know stuff, but I, you don't want to seem like an eager beaver to, like, tell me what you know. It's like, oh, okay. If they, if they share something, they share something. If they don't, they don't. I wouldn't yeah. be like, oh, you know, tell me now, because that's just bad form. Yeah, if they want I mean, to share these something, these people are friends too, you know. So you know, I respect I respect what they want to tell me and what they don't want to tell me. It's completely fine. Yeah, 
Uh, Charlie Thompson says Xbox needs to bring back Viva Pinata. I mean, they should. I doubt Rare's I interested in doing it though. So, uh, Hitman says Viva Pinata hype, bring it back. Okay, so that's two people in a row. Uh, Hey Blinken says Jez, who is Michael Transactions and why would you buy him? <laughs> Michael Transactions is a mean, mean person who hurts my wallet. He does hurt your wallet. Um, uh, Dustin says, are either of you going to the Xbox Showcase or FanFest in LA, and do you have or know anyone that has extra tickets? Jez is going to be there. But- I am going to be there. First time I've ever been to FanFest. I've never been to FanFest before, so this but is completely new. Do me. you have an extra ticket? No, I don't. I'm going as press. Um, so I don't, I'm afraid. But if I did get one, I'd probably do a giveaway on Twitter or something. But Yeah. Um, I don't know. I know. I mean, I know some people that are going, but I think their tickets are are spoken for. Yeah. Uh, and Nation says, Jez, do you ever play Temtem? Which I think is like that Pokemon game, right? Yeah, I've tried Temtem. I I couldn't kind of drive with it. You know, I've said I've said this before on the show. Pokemon for me is ninety five percent nostalgia. So if it ain't Pokemon, it's kind of like, well, what's the point? Uh, I appreciate what they're trying to do, though. Um, but I think that I think they need backing of a big publisher because the updates for that game seem really slow. I think if you're trying to make an MMO, you kind of need more rapid updates. I don't know, but yeah. yeah. Um. Well, so you know what? Let's. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the show, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here or haven't already. It would help out a lot. We're almost at ninety five thousand. Sin Vendetta says, "I swear, if we get Viva Pinata and a banjo, I will riot." I mean, that would be, that would be crazy, <laughs> but I know Jez is itching to talk about Diablo. So he's going to talk about Diablo and we got some other topics, but the X Xbox- the big topic for today's episode is the predictions. And I have stuff yeah. written down. Me and Jez also talked about this on the defining Duke. So I'm sure it's all in our head, but Jez, let the people know how you feel about Diablo four. You've been, you've been chomping at the bit. So, well, then we, we already, didn't we talk about it last week? Because the review and review embargo lifted last week, didn't it? No, the review embargo list lifted this week on Tuesday. So no. Oh really? Yeah. What What am I thinking of? Then? I don't know what you're Maybe thinking I'm of. About it. I don't even know if I'm coming or going anymore, man. But seriously, like I wrote my review. I wrote five thousand words Diablo review. It's the longest review I've ever written because I just had so much to say about it. You know, as as a fan of Blizzard and the franchise, it it kind of meant more to me, I think, than maybe some other reviewers who didn't really play it as I felt like I didn't play it as much as I did. Um, but it's immaculate. The game is just damn immaculate. And I won't go on about it for people, you know, because, you know, the meat of this show is the predictions and stuff. But the graphics are incredible. The physics are amazing. Like the story is really what surprised me. Like in action RPGs, the story is usually kind of secondary, but I felt they put together a really compelling story this time. And, you know, characters that are nuanced and interesting villains that you just kind of like, you don't really know if they're actually villains or not. It's kind of like, wait, am, am I am I on this person's side? They're making a lot of sense <laughs> kind of thing. So it really makes you think and it gets in your head, which is, again, what the villains try to do to the characters in the game. So it's, it's like, it's got these layers, man. The story's just got these layers to it. And also these like unsettling parallels to real life things going down but but in a way that isn't preachy you know like i think a lot of a lot of games that try to do these themes that may be relatable to real life they often come off as as preachy and kind of you know try and tell people what they should and should think shouldn't think but this was like it's kind of like it was just done really really well and um i just really love the story like and i didn't think i'd be sitting there saying that about a diablo game where typically story is a secondary kind of thing right but thankfully, everything else is amazing too. Physics are great. When you hit enemies, they fly apart into bloody chunks, and skeletons fly apart into like bits of bones all over the place. Just feels great. Um, there's so much variety and depth in the combat. You can do c- c- so many custom builds. You know, I-, I feel like people could be playing this for like dozens and dozens of hours and finding new builds and new items. And you know, there's just there's just so much to it. And I'm just really I'm just really happy. I'm just really happy that it it launched in this state where it's polished. There's no bugs. There's no there's no apology on Twitter saying like, mm-hmm. "Oh, we're sorry. We'll do we'll do better next time." Or, "Oh, sorry guys, we 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 failed." And 
the game will there'll be a patch in six months that'll fix all that stuff. There's none of that. They tested it very publicly with the community. They listened to feedback very quickly. They're developing the game with multiple teams, and it really shows. They've delivered something that's super high quality, and it's awesome. And I'm, I expect to be playing it for months to come, probably you know until Starfield comes out. And then after I'm done with Starfield, I'll probably go straight back to Diablo because there'll be expansions. There'll be, you know, free updates and all that kind of stuff. It's probably going to be the, you know, the next service game I play. And, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I, you know, I can't really say anything more to praise it. The only criticism I've got for it, Rand, the only criticism I've got is that it reuses enemies a lot. So, like, mm. in in the first, pretty much in the first area, you see pretty much every monster type there is in the game. There's like each each biome has a slightly different lineup of monsters, but every zone has like the walking trees, every zone has zombies, every zone has skeletons, every zone has bandits. Maybe that maybe they've got a different color shirt on or something. But I think they they could have done a bit more with the monster variety, but it, it feels a little bit greedy to be saying that because of how damn huge the game is. But I will say, Ryan, that I've already seen events that weren't in the review build. So it kind of feels like they've they've already added more stuff since the review build of the game. And season one hasn't even started yet, which will have a theme and it'll have unique stuff to it and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And um, people in chat are telling me I need to finish Persona. Yeah, oh, that's, God. Not that's not happening. That's not happening. It will. Like I knew. Will, like I knew. No, 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 it will. It will happen. It will happen eventually. I you, didn't, a, you did not give me a time limit. You didn't give me a time I'm gonna limit. I'm going to give you a time limit right now. Oh. You have to finish it by the end of the month. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> I'm going to LA. I thought you were going to say by the end of the year or something. I think, well, can I do that? Okay. I mean, all right. Hop, yeah. You, you just set yourself up there. End of the year. You have until December 31st oh. to finish Persona 5. Okay. I, mean, I feel okay, like that's fair. Year. I feel like that's fair. Okay. That's, that is fair. That is fair. I'll, I'll try. I'll try. You basically have half a year to finish it, Jez. Yeah, okay, okay, fine, fine. There is one other game I've played this week, though, briefly. Okay, um, what is and it? I, I, I want to give it a shout-out, because it's a little game. It's a little small indie game. And I just I just want to get... Well, small indie game. It, it's literally... The, the game's $20. So I, I really want to give it a shout-out. And I think a, pe- a lot of people here will enjoy it if they give it, they check it out. It's um, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. Oh, I've heard a lot of good stuff about that game. Yeah, Bolt Gun. It's, um, it's like one of these so-called boomer shooters... That kind of 90s inspired Doom, Duke Nukem, Wolfenstein likes, where it's kind of like, you know, 2D, 3D, but with modern lighting and stuff like that. It's awesome. It plays so well. It must be, it feels so satisfying to play, and the music's great and all that kind of stuff. So if you like shooters, you like games like Doom, you like, if you enjoyed Proteus, you know, give a Bolt Gun a try, and it's only $20. So yeah. Pretty much all I've been playing, man. You've been playing much? Uh, so I did another playthrough of Planet Alana. Uh, to to beat, there's an achievement for beating the game without dying, and I wanted to get it because I like the game enough, and it's short enough where it's like I could easily go through it again and get that achievement, and get all of them. So I did that. Uh, still enjoyed it the second time. I mean, you know, obviously not as good as the first time. And I, I really recommend Planet of Lana. I I was looking at the achievement complaint achievement completion percentages to see how many people started the game and how many people have finished it and shockingly low jazz shockingly like i think it i was think like, you're always going to get that with game pass i think maybe yeah I, well that's the thing about game pass i think you can download it try it if you don't like it obviously you can stop playing but it was like something like the first achievement of the game which is not more than three minutes into it it's like 80 percent. i'm always shocked to see Wow, twenty percent of the people didn't even make it three minutes into the game. That's I always kind of just question those statistics, those numbers. You know, it just seems weird. odd, right? I think um, they should only start tracking that stuff if people start spending more than like maybe half an hour in the game or something. Yeah, but then the the final achievement for beating the game, and the game's not long. It's like between three and four hours, depending on how long you get stuck and things like that. So for a four hour game, it was like complete the game was 10 percent, right around 10 percent. this is like wow it's like 80 percent get that first achievement it was like 60 percent actually get to the title screen and then only 10 percent finished it for a short game so i mean i know there's 
it's not like it's in, on the level of Inside or Little Nightmares. It's not as good as those. I, maybe maybe people don't. Is it horror themed? No, it's not horror themed. It's it's very bright, very colorful. You know, the yeah, message is me like off. the message is like friendship because like you have the little sort of Hi, friendship. You, you have the little 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 creature with you. You know that follows you around and. I guess you Sounds could say maybe the the movement speed is too slow or the climbing speed. There's some maybe some latency in between some of the actions, which might turn some people off. But like when you look at like Inside, like you know Inside has that uh, in- incredible atmosphere that Planet of Lana maybe is missing, even though it looks incredible. Like I love the art style that Planet of Lana is going for. So it'd be interesting to see like okay, what was the reasons why you stopped playing it? So I, I did a second playthrough of that. And then I wasn't sure what I was going to play through next because I was like Street Fighter Six coming out, Diablo Four. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy those games early or get them. So I was like, all right, well, I don't want to start a, a long game. So I, I started playing the Dark Pictures Anthology House of Leaves, which is a game I've had. Uh, came out when in 20, did that come out? Came out in 2021. Because they That's have these old. Yeah, so I. I that's not a trending not, game. Not a trending game. You, so you do play. I will. Club games. I will when when I when there's time between like something new. So I was like, all right. Well, I, I like the Dark Pictures anthology. I like Supermassive Games, the makers of Until Dawn, the Quarry, the Dark Pictures games. So I played them all except for like House of Ashes and the new one, Devil and Me. So I was like, let me play through this. You know, it's a nice little interactive movie game. Um, this one was about vampires because they always sort of take a mythological folklore creature and put their own spin on it. Like Until Dawn was a Wendigo. Uh, Quarry was about werewolves. This one was about vampires. So, um, yeah, it's very, I mean, you want to talk about walking sim? Like it's mostly watching cutscenes play out and choosing dialogue options and then having quick time events to uh, complete actions where it's like, oh, you're aiming at a creature, you pull the trigger at the right time, or, you know, some's like, you're, you're running, and if you trip, you got to press X to not trip, and if you fail some some actions, you might actu- actually have the character die. And that's what oh. the games are all about, either getting all the characters out alive or killing the characters that you don't like and stuff. Uh, but then, like, when you're actually controlling a lot of it for gameplay, it's very short. It's very much just, like, walk in this direction. Maybe there's an open area where you can kind of walk around and pick up objects that are highlighted for context on what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, I think that was, like, a four-hour experience. Just, I, you know, and I enjoyed it, but I don't know if it's as good as the other ones. Definitely not as good as the quarry and definitely not as good as Until Dawn. And now I'm like, well, what do I play next? Do I play Diablo? I'm like, I don't know if I want to buy that. Um, I, I need like a shorter game just to, because like I'm going to be playing Diablo on Monday night, so it's like I can't pick something too long. So I'm kind of okay. kind of thinking about like what I want to play before that. But that's 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 what I've been up to. That's the games I've been playing. So um, nice. I'm really looking forward to playing Diablo though, because you 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 you've wrote glowing reviews. I've talked to other people that are playing it. They seem to really love it. The The thing that really stood out to me was you talked about the story, at least in your DMs to me, and, you know, like how the story's, like, greatly improved, right? Yeah, uh, the story so, delivery is just immense. Yeah, like, so I'm really, really... Uh, let me ask you this question. As someone who's kind of a noob in Diablo, even though they like it, you have these classes. Which class should I pick? Necromancer, Druid, Sorcerer, Barbarian? Honestly, like, which one's for me? Like, which one should I go with? You should pick the class that you think looks the coolest. Okay. Because, I, I I mean, one of our top articles right now on Windows Central is, which is the best class in Diablo, right? And we've got an article up on there which explains the differences. But honestly, the game feels pretty balanced. You'll see, the, you'll see these YouTubers and stuff, and you'll see this stuff online of like, oh, the barbarian one-shots everything and or something <laughs> like that. But it, it's kind of like, well... You know, that's this is like the the highest of the end game stuff where you're min maxing, you sort of you you you're choosing legendaries that synergize, you're crafting the best legendaries for your class and all that kind of stuff. You you can just ignore all that. You know, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna play in the end game at all, if you know if you don't care about leaderboards, if you don't wanna smash people in PvP or whatever, you can literally just pick the class that looks the coolest. You know. You know, what what is your aesthetic? 
you know. So I did my review as a druid because I knew that I was gonna. My man is a necromancer. I always play necromancer every single every time I play Diablo since you know Diablo 3's expansion. I play as a necromancer. Um, and uh, but for the for the review, I played as a druid because you know it would make the second playthrough. Uh, you know, less tedious. <laughs> I have to go through the whole game again because uh, the obviously all the characters are deleted from the review build, right? But yeah, you should play what looks the coolest. You've got the rogue, which is all about stabbing, stabbing right. and agility and arrows. You know, play Legolas kind of thing. You got necromancer, which summons skeletons, runs around, kills things for you. Druid can use you know nature magic, so lightning bolts and earthquakes but they can also transform into werewolves and werebears and stuff like that. And then you've also got the uh, sorcerer, which is magic, you know, fire spells and stuff like that. And then there's the barbarian, which is, you know, your sort of Tank berserker. Character, right? I mean, every class is a DPS class in this, pretty much. I mean, there, there'll be ones that's slightly squishier. You know, you, like, like a sorcerer's probably take less hits than a barbarian, for example. But... um uh but every class is dps you know you could even if you are a barbarian that's got high health you still do mon monstrous damage if you design your character that way you know um because you can sort of you can create your character however you want you know you can uh, you can have a druid spec that focuses entirely on being a bear you know you don't have to cast any magic whatsoever you know or you can focus on being a druid that focuses entirely on casting magic and you never transform into a bear whenever. So it's so it's it's that diversity that I absolutely love about the game. So yeah, honestly, just play whatever looks the coolest. Don't don't read guides, you know. Okay. Maybe Fair ask enough. your mates for advice and That's, I'll, I'll I'm, give you I'm I'll asking give you because you're my mate. Yeah. I mean when you're playing it, bro. Yeah. When you're playing it, bro. Uh Locante says, Jez, any chance you're willing to go in more detail on the great things you've heard about Gear Six? Thank you. Love the podcast. I mean, you did. Dude. You have said this, so I mean, sh sh should you expound on it? I guess is the question. I mean, uh, uh, do I want to do this? Well, what I heard was specifically about the game's visuals. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. I don't know anything about how it plays. I don't know anything about whether the gameplay direction they're going in but it sounds like they're taking they're taking it to the next level it sounded like to me and they were talking about how they're using you know the latest the latest advances from unreal engine to really really push the visuals out so you know like how you've got studios like naughty dog who are sort of held up on this pedestal of being you know the cutting edge of visual quality and also ninja theory as well to some degree it sounds like the coalition's really pushing the boat out in that way, in that direction. But um, I don't know that much about it um, beyond that. But it sounds it sounds like they're really trying to get to the next level, as to be expected. I mean, Gears Hive Busters. I know it was, I think, uh, just DLC. But you're talking about one of the best looking launch experiences. I mean, I know it's not like a game; it's a DLC expansion within it. But holy cow! Like the coalition. They are wizards, and I'm sure they can make Unreal Engine 5 sing. So if you're probably talking about a graphical showpiece for what current gen is going to be able to do, then yeah, you're probably looking at them, at least on the Xbox side. They're probably going to push the boundaries, right, of graphical fidelity. Because there have been a lot of, a lot of um, talk about how none of the really the first party studios have really pushed the series X to its potential or any game really. Right. Uh, about how like nobody's really utilizing the series X to what it is capable of. And I think coalition is one of those studios that will get everything out of it as they can. And when you look at, you know, the, the jump of improvement from like gears four to gears five and then hive busters, we're probably assuming Gears 6 will be current gen only, so no Xbox One. Um, I'm just imagining in my head, like, you know, every time, like, a game comes out, people will be like, oh, this game is the new, the new, the new benchmark for 
for gra- graphical fide- fidelity in games. I'm I'm going to say like when Gear 6 comes out, people will talk about that as being like the high bar. Mm, um, yeah. So I'm very interested in seeing what they do for Gear 6. It's been a long time. Like I'm at the point now where I'm like, all right, I could go for another Gears. It's been since 20, 2019. You know, before years this year, we know it's not coming this year. Probably not even going to come next year. So by the time it gets here, six years, maybe five years, be like, yeah, I could go for some gears. And I know you could go for some gears, Jez. I know you miss it. I do. I do. Um, I, my dream is, you know, gear six, taking it to the next level, but also I'd love to see gears tactics too. You know, yeah. and I know my, Microsoft's like, Microsoft seems like they were just utterly confused about what makes tactics games popular because they added no management layer to that, to the game at all. There was no management system. There was no, like, um, there was no meta game on top of the combat. They were just like, oh, com- X commas combat, let's just do that. And apparently I heard that splash damage was like, we need a meta, we need a meta game layer to this, you know, a management layer where you have, you have a base, and apparently that's what the you know because in Gears Tactics they've got the whole the convoy. Apparently the the convoy system was supposed to be this huge system where you build up the convoy as you're traveling through the story, you know, adding facilities and and doing all the management stuff that XCOM has. That's what tactics games are supposed to be. They're supposed to have this management layer. And for some reason, Microsoft was like, oh no, we need to ship this right now. We need to ship it right now. Um, and when they could have they could have kept it in development for another, you know, another year and a half, it wouldn't have affected anything. And they could have made it way better and they could have had another pillar franchise. Um, that would have appealed to PC gamers, but they they just rushed it out of the door, man. I'm still kind of salty about that round. A little bit salty, bro. A little bit salty. A little, little so bit salty. You're saying that uh are you saying that Microsoft was wasn't wasn't hands off on that game? Mm, from from what I've heard, no. Um, this this was a but this is Xbox publishing, right? I heard there was they weren't hands off with Halo Wars either. Um, I heard Halo Wars again. Uh, the, there was all these rumors that the the third Halo Wars two expansion was supposed to include space combat, which is what people have been you know hoping to see from the franchise since forever. And for whatever reason, Microsoft just doesn't give these games enough time to bake, like Xbox publishing or whatever. Um, I don't know. It's a whole. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, man. It's a whole thing, baby. They should put me in charge. And they I'd should. Be like, Look. So does this? Okay, because I guess maybe that's a good, like, segue to segue. the Redfall stuff. Because so you're saying that at least Microsoft is more involved in their publishing uh, arm. Then, you know, Jason Schreier coming out and reporting uh, about Redfall, basically saying that Microsoft had, you know, no involvement other than, like, canceling the PS5 version, that the game started in 2018. Let me let me, let me get some actual, like, quotes here. So, like, you know, not just, like, I'm not paraphrasing and maybe getting it wrong. Uh, that Redfall devs reportedly hoped it would be canceled or rebooted and that it suffered from unclear direction and staffing issues. Um, the game's development was hampered by a lack of clear direction, a high turnover of staff, and insignificant resources for what was billed as a AAA game. Uh, started in development in 2018 after being pitched to staff as a multiplayer arcane game. Some members reportedly mm. found the pitch confusing and felt unsure that the sort of gameplay that arcane was known for would translate well to a co-op setting. The game suffered because its development team was continually, continually understaffed with Austin's office employing fewer than a hundred people and insufficient outsourcing support offered by, by Bethesda. Uh, many developers who weren't, who weren't interested in making a multiplayer game reportedly left the studio with almost three quarters of our Austin staff who had worked on 2017's prey said to have departed arcane by the time Redfall was finished. And they had trouble, um, uh, filling vacancies with lower than average salaries, its Texas location and the desire pr- prospective employees to work on a single player immersive sin viewed as contributing factors. Uh, but then Microsoft acquired them and developers hoped that either Microsoft would cancel the game or let them reboot it. And as we know what Phil sort of talked about and your reporting is that Microsoft was like hands off with Bethesda. Hey, 
you know, we got shit to run on our side. You run your side. And, you know, Phil admitted that they didn't do a good job uh, engaging with Arcane, Arcane Austin in the beginning to help them out. So it sounds like sometimes with some people, with some scenarios, they're hands off. And then other times they're hands on to the point where it's detrimental to the game. What do you think? Right. Yeah, it does sound like that is something they've already changed. Um, cause I've heard that some of the, some of the second, third party, I don't know what you call them. Second party, third party. I don't know what you're going to call them these days, but some of the, some of the Xbox publishing deals that they've got, I've heard they're taking a closer look at some of them now. Uh, look, some of the reviews came in early after the Redfall disaster. So I think they are sort of, they are taking a, a closer look at some of these games because, and they should, because it reflects on the Xbox brand at the end of the day. Redfall reflected on the Xbox brand. I mean, it was right there in Bloomberg's headline, the latest Xbox misfire, you know. So the media is directly ascribing the failure of Redfall to Xbox. And, you know, around my article, um, you know, Microsoft needs to expand its oversight mechanics. And I put in my headline that you can't blame Microsoft for Redfall because... I wrote that in the context of you can't blame them for the meddling, but if you actually you can't you can't suggest that they meddled in it or they shipped it early and stuff like that, um, because they were completely hands off. So I wrote in my article, I wrote in my article that they should be more hands on and they should explore boosting the budget for the teams that handle oversight and do testing and stuff like that. A lot of their testing, game testing, is done via agencies. And using agency staff rather than, you know, more robust testing measures, the likes of which we've seen for early access games or Grounded even or Diablo 4, you know. Diablo 4 had an end game beta where they tested it with content creators and stuff like that, you know. Um and all this extra stuff. And it, it, I can't imagine anyone who tested Redfall was sitting there singing its praises, you know. It's kind of a shock that Xbox didn't come down on it with a ton of bricks. Hindsight's twenty twenty though. Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. And all they can do is learn, all they can do is learn from it. All that's all they can do. Because I'm thinking of a scenario where let's imagine they saw what it was, and I'm sure they knew what it was, and they decided to cancel our, the game. Like, you know what? This isn't a good enough. We're not going to put this out. Your game's canceled that you've been working on for three years at this point. Now, I still think Microsoft is very much feeling the effects of canceling Scalebound and Fable Legends. Like, hell, this podcast, we can't go an episode without somebody bringing up Scalebound. And there's even rumors that Scalebound might even be coming back, right? It's a constant thing that Microsoft can't escape from. Now, with hindsight being 2020, we, we saw how Redfall performed and what it did to the brand, I don't think was good. I don't I really think Redfall did nothing but hurt the brand. Now, I don't have like the, the, the gameplay numbers or how many people actually played it. Maybe a lot of people are loving it or whatever, and my view of it is is tainted, or at least um, you know, I'm thinking of like the reaction on social media, the reaction on YouTube, my own personal reaction, and I'm putting my own emotions into it, and I'm like, yeah, the game probably shouldn't have come out. Uh, but in reality, maybe lots of people are enjoying it. I don't necessarily think that's the case, but it's a possibility. But with that said... It's not the case. But, okay. <laughs> but with that said, I wow. imagine a that was, scenario... That was, that was uncharacteristically optimistic. Right, true. I don't... Yeah, but with that said, I imagine a scenario where, like... Microsoft was always criticized in the past for meddling, for getting too involved, for f- forcing their culture onto different studios, right? Well, and, I just did it earlier when I was bitching about Gears Tactics. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying that was that's always been a thing with them, is that has always been a reason why some developers don't want to work for them. And I think they had to change how they approach some of these acquisitions and be like, hey, you know what? You can do a Pentiment. You could do these sort of things. We're not going to get involved. We're not going to interfere with the creative process. Go ahead. Because 
you know, Obsidian, Ninja Theory, they're probably all wary. Like, no, we still want to do it. Like, we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want you stepping in, cramping our style. So they got to change things up. And then you get Bethesda. And I just imagine a scenario in my mind where if they would have canceled Arcane's game and then before it was ever shown off, but eventually I would imagine that would have got out. Like, imagine a Jason Schreier article or Steven Tatilla article basically said that Microsoft canceled Arcane Austin's game. And the reaction oh. online would have been horrible. Because you'd be like, look what Microsoft is already doing. They're screwing around with Bethesda. They just canceled Arcane's game. You can imagine the vitriol that would have <laughs> happened. Voice? Well, yeah, you know, that, that voice in particular. But you can imagine the reaction that people would have from an announcement from 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 a report that Microsoft already inserted them into Bethesda's operations and canceled a game that Arcane was working on. Because up until Redfall, everybody has this really amazing outlook of what Arcane has accomplished. And they view them as one of the better studios in the world, right? The Dishonored games prey Deathloop. And right, they're just coming off of Deathloop. 88 Metacritic, Game of the Year nominee and all that sort of stuff. Microsoft would have been crucified by gamers. Hell, they probably would have been crucified by me and you and a lot of Xbox fans being like, are you serious? You canceled an arcane game? What is wrong with you? Right? Yeah, but now true, we, right. we have the 2020 hindsight. We've all played Redfall. We've all seen it. And we're all sitting here being like, yeah, well, maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe you should have. But you don't have that luxury back then. So I think Microsoft is very much, listen, we bought you. We kept you in- intact for the most part. You need to run yourselves. Uh, we got our own things we're trying to figure out. And we're hopefully we can just get put out Redfall and just move on. It'd be a speed bump, whatever. I Yeah, so it's like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if you get involved, then all the articles about how you're meddling. If you don't get involved... Well, then you end up with Redfall like this and like, you should have gotten involved, you you know? But like, as we've all played the game, I don't think anything was ever going to save Redfall. I think it was just rotten to its core. Uh, There's nothing that was going to solve whatever was plaguing that experience. And even when we first talked about it, Jazz, when we played it, I said, to me, it didn't seem like their heart was in this game. To me, it didn't seem like this was the game they wanted to make. And sure enough, backed up by Jason Schreier's reporting. That's exactly what happened. Most of Arcane Austin didn't want to work on this game. They didn't want to make a uh, multiplayer co-op shooter, a looter shooter. It was basically the Arcane's leadership and whoever was in charge of ZeniMax at the time. Like uh, people talk about it, Providence and, yeah. and things like that. So it was a, it's it was totally, a, yeah, it's totally a product of Bethesda's pivot to multiplayer era. I think I wrote that in my review. Like it's, it was them. It was so. It's a product of the era that gave us Young Blood. A product of the era that gave us Fallout Full seventy six. Yep. That you know, it was ended up being okay. But even like Elder Scrolls Online, like when that came out, that was reviewed pretty badly, like six out of ten. It's a, it's a, it, they're, all these are products of that era where Zenimax was like, okay, well, what, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna be? Are we gonna? you know, struggle on or we're we going to figure out how we grow in an era of Fortnites and Rocket Leagues and, you know, mobile games. Like, what what the hell do we do? How do we do this? And we, we've seen other publishers go through this existential crisis. Hell, Sony themselves are going through this crisis right now. That's why we've seen, like, a million service games suddenly appear out of the ether as PlayStation Showcase, which was a very different kind of showcase. And it's like, well, well I, was, uh, I was joking on Twitter that it was a very good, you know, Xbox Showcase. And that's not just like the fact that half the games come in at PC and Xbox, but also the fact that service games are usually what we expect of them. Xbox show, you know, it was a very different kind of Sony, very different kind of Sony showcase. So, um, I kind of like, I kind of, I appreciate the fact that they were in that position and they were trying to figure out how to grow, but yeah, hindsight's 2020, like we yeah. all say. They would have been damned if they did and damned if they didn't. Yeah. I mean, and- at the end of the day, it's like it all reflects poorly on Xbox. So, you know, you can blame the Redfall devs for making the game. You can blame Bethesda for forcing the game. Hell, I blame I blame us. I blame people who didn't buy Prey. I mean, I bought Prey. 
But nobody bought Prey. So it's like we, we have to make this game. There's a lot of blame going around, but ultimately it all ends up at Xbox's doorstep, like a bag of dog poo you know, that's on fire, right, essentially. Have you ever done that? Have you ever, you ever done that where you put dog, no. dog poo in, no. in a bag and lit it on fire and rang the doorbell? No, Rand. Have you? No. Uh, no, I don't know. I, no. I mean, I've never done it, but I've been around. <laughs> I, I've, I think I've been around people. I think I told that story. We we were friends with this crazy kid, this crazy kid, who like hated one of his neighbors, and like took his t shirt oh, no. and like set it on fire and like put it oh, on their doorknob. No. And we were like, "What are you doing?" And by the time we came back to the house, there was like a chemical cleanup clue there or something. Or I, I don't know. Was, that dude was nuts. That dude, he, we got like arrested by the cops one time or at least taken in the station like we were coming home it was like midnight 12 30 i'm going home i'm with these two guys and this dude who put the burning shirt on the doorknob and, and knocked it on the door he like ran up to this house and ripped off the uh the drainage pipe <laughs> and like he, he let him, he went up to the house and just ripped it off right so it's one of these things that is the length of the house from the top to the bottom or the water, you know, drains out to the ground, literally just ripped it off. <laughs> and me and my buddy are just look, me and my buddy, Mike, you know, we're high school age. So maybe we were, we were sophomores or, or, or juniors or something. Cause we'd, I, yeah, we we're probably sophomore juniors. Cause I would have been driving at that point. So obviously it must, I must've well, been what's that? 15. What's that in English. 15, I must've been 15, okay. maybe 16 and didn't have my, and didn't have a car or whatever. And he rips this thing off the house. And me and Mike are just like, what are you doing? And we just start booking it. We, I couldn't believe it. We start like booking it, right? And he's running, he's running with this huge thing down the street. We're running. And then he catches up to us because we stop. And he just throws it at us. And it was like, okay. So we continue walking. And then someone in a car comes to our left a couple minutes later and gets out of his, out of his car and he's like, hey, guys, what's going on? And we're like, hey, what's up? And then he, he gets his, which one of you MFers tore off the thing to my house? And me and Mike are like, <laughs> like what the hell? And, you know, and he's yelling at the, he's, oh he's like, God. I did. And he's, I did it. And I was like, I'm calling the cops. And the people whose house we were stopped in front of, they come out. And he was like, call the cops. They damaged my property. And like, so the cops came and, you know, they, they arrested my buddy and then i they i don't know we weren't arrested but like they put us in the cop car and we went to the station and God, we had to wait for people to come our parents to come get him and my my i don't think my n nobody was home so like it was his it was mike's mom that came to get us and oh boy the look she gave us and look she gave me I remember that <laughs> for the rest of my life and i went home and I'm not sure I ever told my parents what happened because I, it's not like I did anything. It was, just, it was just, I was just there. It just happened. And it was just there. Just crazy kid. Just, you know, like it's not my fault. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one of those things that just literally happened. Okay. Okay. How, how many Randall criminal stories are there, bro? Bro. I mean, come on. There's a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Randall criminal stories. It's like, it's like becoming a theme, bro. It's like a theme. And it wasn't me. People are like, "Yeah, it was you." I'm like, "No, I would never do that." I was just, yeah, my just, my friend did it. Just, yeah, okay, I'm just, okay, Rand, your friend. <laughs> I'm just look. I, sometimes we share. This is it. Rand's like, giving us the plug. Grand Theft Auto Six, right here in the chat. Yeah, Vandal <laughs> Thor, Randall Thor, Hooligan. I mean, come on. <laughs> Living the thug life. Come on. Oh man. Yeah. Well, you know, to be fair, I guess my parents and Mike's parents all told us not to hang out with that kid because he was bad news. And well, I mean, you yeah. You think? I, well, <laughs> yeah. You think? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, anyways. x says he lived in Chicago, probably like 30 stories. Uh, there, I mean, there, there, there are stories. There are stories. Uh, we God, got Jay God. Rembert saying, Redfall was a two-edged sword. Microsoft was literally between a rock and a hard place. Uh, Gary says Microsoft can be blamed for pumping Redfall as a AAA flat flagship so far ahead. Early leak fo footage was close to what we got, and it was already what uh, WTF. Yeah, I mean, like they're the ones who decided to close the showcase in twenty twenty one with Redfall, and then have it open up, and then always kind of 
market Redfall as this big game, and it wasn't ready for the limelight, and I don't know if it ever was. Uh, my name is Mud says Rand. Check out the Bramble, the Mountain King. I did. I I I watched the trailer and I saw some reviews, so I decided to buy that. I'm gonna play that at some point. Uh, Dustin says thank you. I was just wondering. I am traveling from Georgia to LA and will be going to Summer Games Fest. The original plan was to attend E3 for the first time, but E3 was canceled. Yeah, it sucks for people that wanted to go to E3, but ended up being yeah. canceled. Yeah, that is uh that does suck. So yeah, you could go to Summer Game Fest. Summer Games Fest. Let's talk about our predictions, shall we, for the showcase? Yeah, it's that time. time if you guys are enjoying the show, hit that like button, please. Subscribe if you're new. Leave us a rating on Spotify or iTunes or anything. Five stars would be much appreciated. A review, you know, uh, it really does help out, like uh, more than you think, because it kind of gets you pushed a little bit further. More people discover it. They'll come check out the live show or people watch the live show and they'll download stuff on Spotify and iTunes. It's it's all really important to the show's health and the channel's health and the podcasts and all that stuff. So we appreciate each and every one of you that are here and listening later. So, all right, Jez. I have written down here, you know, the studios. I guess we'll start with um we'll start with let's start with third party deals, shall we? Just if you have any any inkling of a third party game that may or may not show up here. Uh, you know, hit me, hit me with what you got when it comes to third party. Third party. I think we'll see the wandering tower from stoic. So you're basically Project saying that's Battle like 3. global publishing. So, okay. Global publishing, right? Oh, so is that, is that not what you mean? Well, I mean, okay. We can trans global publishing. Let's talk about global publishing. So wandering okay. tower. Okay. So what did you mean then? Well, third party like is a Far Cry Seven going to be there? Is oh, uh, Mortal Kombat you One mean like that sort of yeah, stuff? But okay. we we can do global publishing first. So Wandering Tower, which was, I believe, Project uh, Belfry, Belfry from Belfry. Stoic, who re- who did Banner Saga, right? Yes. Um, uh, they made Banner Saga. I think this is going to be. I don't really know exactly what kind of game it's going to be. Like the the whole concept of there being a tower and that you build up and you know, sort of action RPG tactics. I, I don't know. Honestly, don't know really what what kind of game it is. Um, but it sounds really interesting, and the, they're good dev, and they've grown a lot to accommodate this game. I think it's still going to be a sort of double-A game. You know, they're, they're not a massive studio, but I think that's one of the global publishing games that we'll see at the show. Um, other global publishing games that we could potentially see, I mean, Contraband is technically that, isn't it, Rand? Contraband is a global publishing title, yeah, with Avalanche. Do you think, do you think we'll see Contraband this year? I do. I do think we haven't seen it for a while. I mean, I agree with you. So I agree. Wandering Tower will be there. Project uh, Belfry. I think it's going to launch next year. Uh, twenty twenty four title. Would you agree with that? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, sounds about right. I also agree with you about contraband. Well, I don't know if you think contraband is going to be there because I think you said no earlier. But I do think contraband is going to be there. Hmm. Uh, I think we'll get a gameplay showing. And I do think it's going to come out next year. Wow. Okay. Maybe that's a little I, bit optimistic. I don't know, but it sounds optimistic to me. I don't think I don't think it's going to be there. I think like some. I think they announced that early just to give us because it was a year where they kind of had to give us a broader roadmap about why you should invest in the in the platform. But I kind of feel like this game's probably further out. Um, that's not based on anything I've heard. I just kind of. I just get that impression from some of the some of the the ways I've been people have talked to me about it. Um, I'm not optimistic it's going to be there this time, but hey, maybe Rand's right. Maybe it is there. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, contraband. They didn't really show much in 2021. The, this so <sighs> these predictions are always fun to do, but because of what happened last year, it's it's also very difficult. Cause what happened last year? Last year, we put up all of our predictions about what we thought, because we thought it would be a typical show. And then Microsoft's like, <laughs> got you guys. It's only 12 months. 12 months. Yeah, and yeah. I think they only well, showed, they showed 32 games. They only showed eight first-party games. So they showed 
Starfield. They showed Redfall. They showed Aura History Untold. They showed Minecraft Legends. They showed Sea of Thieves. Uh, they showed Grounded. And I think that's it. Off the top of my head, that's seven games they showed. Granted, some of them were games we've always seen every single year. So it wasn't that many new ones. Um, so that because of that, because we got so burned by them, it makes me a little bit more cautious to want to predict stuff because you never know what sort of things Microsofts are gonna Microsoft will pull. Right? Well, how about this? The only leak that I would give you for this show oh. is that they've okay. and I don't know I don't know I don't know if they've I don't know if they've already maybe they've already even announced this themselves. I'm like ninety five point seven three two recurring percent sure that the twelve month thing is ditched. There's not gonna be any gimmicks, it's not gonna be a twelve month thing. It's there's, there might be games that are further out. It's going to be more traditional Good. E3 style Good. show. That's Don't... the only leak you'll get from me about the show. Okay. I mean, I think you did mention that last week. And no, they haven't said oh, okay. anything. They haven't said anything. In, f- in fact, I don't know if you saw Aaron Greenberg took a picture with Rubes and Major Nelson. And people were like, oh my God, uh, are you teasing Fable? Did you see this tweet? I did not. So what did he say? The sloth tweeted a picture of like Aaron and them at this uh, concession stand in Microsoft, and so when you look at it, it's it's like a like this food place that says Able A B L E. It's like the F is cut off, right? So sloth was like, "Is Aaron Greenberg teasing Fable on his Instagram?" Right with the picture. Because it looks it looks like he's in front of something that does say Fable, but the F is cut off. And right, he's with right. Rubes. He's he's with Rubes, and he's with he's with Major Nelson. So people that's are like, "What? What is that? Are they teasing it again?" And then our buddy Cold Eastwood says, "No, that's a cafeteria restaurant uh, in the Microsoft office because Colt's been there, right?" And Aaron Greenberg responded to Colt and said, "Correct." And I've not teased anything prefer for our friends to be surprised when they watch live, but it does feel like right now, if I sneeze, someone will say X game confirmed laughing emoji. <laughs> Love you all. And the passion keep it coming as we are about a week away. Uh, hashtag hold the line. Hold the line. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh. I thought that was that was funny. It's like, oh, is is everything's like, oh, is this a tease? Is this a tease? Uh, not everything's a tease, right? Yes. Uh oh, someone just uh All right. Anyways, we have um yeah. Mike Clark says who is Cold Eastwood? Cold Eastwood's my buddy. Cold Eastwood is a Xbox content creator. He makes incredible videos and hosts of the X and C podcast. So, uh anything else from Global Publishing? I know Project Dragon, is that still a thing with Xbox? Was it ever a thing with Xbox? IO Interactive, uh, could that show up? I don't personally think so. Uh, mm. I mean, you're not even sure if it's with Xbox anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing with that is that sort of like... they The information for that came to me... Um, very early in development so it might have just been a case of oh that's that's just a pitch it's not even you know it's not even going to be a a game it's just a pitch so it could be that i'm completely i pitched that to uh release that information way too early and that the game actually isn't even a thing that's gonna be a thing you know so um for for xbox at least but it very well could be, you know, just don't know yet. So I think it might be if they do show that off. And if it is Xbox, it's going to be CGI. So maybe. Okay. I would say that's a definite, maybe, maybe, uh, Kojima's game overdose. Do you think we see it again? No, no, I agree with you. I don't think so. I I think overdose is further away and I do not think we, we see it at the show. Um, trying to think what other global uh publishing 
stuff there is. Shaolin, the Shaolin game, Project Shaolin. Uh, the the Wu Tang game, I guess. I, think I don't know. think we see that. Yeah, I don't think we see that either. That's another game that might not even be Xbox anymore. Jeez, what are you doing? Did you leak this stuff way too early? Yes, I did. Why didn't you stop me? I did try to stop you constantly, and you never listened to me. Nah, it's fake news. You never try to stop me. You're always like, Jez, leak it, leak it, leak it. And I'm like, bro, don't stop making me leak everything. But uh, what do you like, Rand? What are you like? Uh, Yeah, so <laughs> I think out of the global publishing stuff, we'll see Wandering Tower, and I think we'll see Contraband. I mean, any new ones? Maybe. Uh, but it's it's always difficult because Microsoft has a slew of live service titles, right? Mm. So, you know, when you talk about that, I, you know, when you say 343, I expect a Halo trailer for Season 4 to show up. I don't expect anything from Tatanka, uh, from Certain Affinity, but with Season 4 of Halo Infinite coming June 20th, I believe is the date, and the showcase is June 11th, despite me wanting them to just give all their life service stuff to Keeley, just like, all right, hand it to Keeley. At least maybe that's a different audience than the one that's going to watch the Xbox show. I just feel that, yeah, they're going to have a short trailer, maybe try to get excitement back in, in Halo again, and Halo Infinite shows up as just, hey, this is season four launching June 20th, because Microsoft does this. You know, and it's mm. it's stuff like I don't want to see. I'd rather not see these things because I don't particularly care. And it's like this is something that is taking up some spot to another game that could be really cool or a new announcement. Instead, it's like, all right, okay, here's Halo. Oh, you know, here's Grounded. Ugh. Here's Sea of Thieves. Uh, Pete Hines is out. And here's Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout 76 to bring everybody down because nobody cares. You know, and I've, uh, I, I've, I've, people took, care, bro. Not the people watching the show, not the people tuning in. Oh, really? I don't You're think so. I don't think so. Hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe, well, I didn't know they were doing an extended show until you mentioned yes, it. So maybe are. the extended show where some of this stuff shows up. Possibly. I mean, we already, I mean, January, we already had the Elder Scrolls Online thing, and that I think already came out or is coming out. So I hmm. do expect. 343 to show up with something Halo Infinite related. Most likely Season 4. I don't expect Tatanka. Uh, and then when you look at like Rare, uh, I I mean, Sea of Thieves is always there, right? Last two years, when I went back and looked, both there. I think Season 10 is coming. So you probably get some funny Sea of Thieves trailer. Uh, the, the big question mark is Everwild. Do you think Everwild shows up? Well, there was that whole report about Everworld that it was rebooted. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. Sometimes I think what constitutes a reboot in the minds of um, press and gamers is different to what it actually means. Because there was reports that uh, Avowed was rebooted. But from what, what I was told, the, 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 the language reboot was kind of strong. And it wasn't exactly rebooted, just sort of refocused in a way without like completely rebooting it. I think when, pe when people hear the word reboot, they think, oh God, they've thrown out all the code and all the assets and started over. But that's not what reboot means oftentimes in, in terms of game development. So, um, but do I think Everworld's going to be there? It's a bit different with Everworld because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Rand, but didn't the lead producer on that game leave Microsoft? Uh, I think the lead Something creative, like that. creative director left. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's still going through the, the motions, maybe. But hey, um, you know, could be wrong. Yeah, Personally, I, I don't think we're going to see it, though. I don't think prediction. so either. And it's a game that they definitely revealed way too early because we saw it in 2019, and then we saw it again mm -hmm. in 2020. And we probably won't see it again until next year. That's, yeah, I that's think when maybe I think we'll, we'll see it, it next year. Mainly because, oh... It isn't cancelable. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think it's been cancelled. They, they've been I think, I think Louise O'Connor's on it, and she's been talking... She's mentioned it before. Okay. So I, I, I think they're making good progress on it. It's just I don't think they're at a point where it's like, all right... Well, that's we'll, we'll show it off. Um, okay. Jez, Coalition. 
Tell me. Coalition, man. I want to believe that the Coalition will see the Coalition, but I don't think so. I think like I think with the Coalition, when they reveal Gear Six, it will be from it will be with the CGI straight into in engine footage. I don't think they'll I don't think they'll do a CGI teaser for that and then make us wait a year or two. I think that'll be like a one two punch. It's kind of like what they did with Diablo. Because they they did with Diablo, they did they did CGI and then they were like, Oh by the way, here's some here's some quick cut gameplay footage. Because that they, they, they knew they knew that was gonna be excruciating for fans to have to wait. Right. So um, I think that's how they'll do it with Gears as well. So on that basis, I'm going to say no to Gears, and Gears is next year. What do you think, yeah. Randale? So there's a lot of lot of talk about Gears Collection, uh, which seems to be more real than not, right? So mm-hmm. <sighs> I've been going back and forth on this because – Phil said collection of games is the kind of funny thing, and people think he sort of misspoke and kind of let go of all oh, this is what's coming, and a Gears collection is in the works. And I do think if a Gears collection is real, I think it has to launch before Gear Six. And I do think Gear Six is probably at the earliest at this point, twenty twenty five. So. I don't think the Gears Collection is this year. I think it's next year. And in my mind, you don't need that much of a leeway, that much of an advance in announcing a Gears Collection. You don't need to announce in 2023 a collection for 2024. So I think it shows up next year. And I think when they show up with the Gears Collection next year, I think they'll be like, here's a trailer for the Gears Collection, Marcus Phoenix Collection. And then they'll be like, and here's a sneak peek at what we're doing next. And it's a really quick Gear 6 teaser. Uh-huh. So I don't think we will see the Coalition this year. Uh, which is the same because I, I, I was thinking like, oh man, the new IP that Jeff Grubb talked that is about. A shame. It's like, oh man, you know, but I don't think we'll see it because I don't think the Collection's this year. Now, if it is this year, obviously it'll show up. And if it does show up, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Gear 6 thing. I think it's next year. Could be wrong, but mm. this is a prediction about like, I don't want to say I don't know, so I'm going to say no. The Gears Collection and the Gears 6 teaser is next year, and we won't see anything from the Coalition at this show. Fair. Fair enough. Yeah. People are calling you out for um for saying millions of ESO players means nobody cares. Well, <laughs> I'm going to defend you, Ryan, because I think more what Ryan's saying is the people watching the show yes. are more interested in the direction of the platform. We all know ESO's doing well. And I think like ESO fans, you know, they they can do their own story beats. You know, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to see an expansion reveal for World of Warcraft at the Xbox show, you know, for example. Yeah. When I, when I say nobody cares, I'm saying the people that tune into the show, I don't think are the people that are like Elder Scrolls, let's go. Right. Um, yeah. So that's this, what I mean. This has to that. be, this has to be about, the the broader implications of the platform because we all know ESO is doing well and to be fair about ESO they literally just didn't they just release a new expansion called Necrom for that game if I, if unless I'm going crazy <sighs> so I think it'd be it'd be it'd be weird for them to talk about ESO so so soon after another yeah, but expansion they could though because you could have your staple P9 segment where he talks about the new ESO expansion and then the Fallout 76 expansion which I don't think they've talked about mm. the roadmap yet for Fallout 76 so it's possible. That's true. That's the thing about Xbox is they're all neck deep in the live service stuff. And we've seen repeated uh, history from them where they do like to show and remind people that, hey, Sea of Thieves is a thing. Go check out Season 10. Hey, Halo Infinite. Go play Season 4. You know, these games that a lot of people play. My thing is Mm. like, I sort of feel the people who watch the Xbox Showcase are looking for new announcements are looking for updates on on games that we haven't heard about in a while. They're looking for they Game Pass They call it the Elusive Five, right? Yeah. That's what I think people are, are looking for. They're, I don't know. I, I don't really think they're looking for, uh, you know, an, a, a new trailer for ESO. Uh, I mean, I, I obviously I could be wrong on that. And maybe I'm putting my own personal feelings about what I want to see at a show over what is 
good for business, essentially. Because I'm sure if you asked Phil, you know, he'd be like, Sea of Thieves is popular. We got to let people know this content's coming. And what better way than our, our own showcase? And it'd be hard to yeah. disagree with him because he runs the business. But as someone who's f- sent feedback to people at Xbox being like, yo, when you trot out these games, people have already seen hundreds of times all the time. You, you lose the momentum and, and the showcase becomes boring, right? Mm-hmm. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, maybe someone who really loves ESO will be sitting there being like, I want to see it, Rand. Or I want to see Fallout 76. It's just, you know, this is our podcast and these are my views. <laughs> so I'm going to say <laughs> what I want and how I feel. I think they should in- I think they should move towards positioning QuakeCon as the Bethesda show yeah. for some of these, for some of the, the broader game announcements, you know, but I don't know. Uh, so next up, so three, four, three, Halo's going to be there. Coalition. We both think it's probably next year, right? Yeah. Uh, rare sea of thieves. We both think there, I guess this would be a good thing. Rare and banjo. Cause banjo's one of their IPs. So this would fall under banjo that. Banjo. Banjo. You know, the banjo bros are going to go broken hearted yet again. Is that banjo, what you're telling me? Just ain't coming, man. You don't think it's, it's coming, period. Coming. You don't think Banjo's coming at all. Yeah. Not at this show. And not in the foreseeable. Maybe someday. But I don't think they're actively trying to do something with it. I think they've got bigger fish to fry. I think that might be something we could see via Toys for Bob someday. Right. You know? Um, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. They just don't have a studio to make it, man. And I don't even know a third-party studio to make it. Like, who's making third-person cartoony platform games except for nintendo really i mean what do you do you get like the team that's that who made... you get bro you get nintendo to make, it? to make you it? make a nintendo collaboration yeah. where ban- the banjo remake launches on switch 2 switch and xbox, and xbox. that that would be incredible that'd be a that that would be a dream for banjo fans and it, it sounds too good to be true to me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it definitely would be yeah yeah <laughs> um i agree oh, with yeah. you I know people are like yearning in their hearts for something banjo. I, I know, I know per- Paris is praying at the altar of Lilith to, uh, you know, conjure banjo into existence. <laughs> but I, th- I think you're going to have to wait still longer. It's definitely a missed opportunity. You know, all that goodwill you had after the banjo announcement with smash and doesn't sound mm-hmm. like it's there. So, uh, next up Ninja theory, Jez. Ab- yes, yes Hellblade's yes. going to be there. Absolutely. For sure. For Absolutely. Sure. Game of the show already. I don't even need to see the rest of it. Game of the show? Yeah, I don't know about that. Game of all the showcases. The best game shown at the PlayStation Showcase, Hellblade 2. Best game shown at the Xbox One, Hellblade 2. Best game shown at the Ubisoft One, Hellblade 2. Hellblade 2, best game shown at all these showcases. Will be number one. Yes. Ah, uh, you ruined it now. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Hellblade 2. Me and Jez both feel and both think Hellblade 2 will be there. Um, I guess the bigger question now is release date. Now, oh. you have been all year saying, uh, if I was a betting man, i put all my money on Hellblade 2 launching this fall. Are you still a betting man, Jez? Or or what's up? I what's am. going on? I, okay. I think I, I'm a betting man. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a leak. I don't know for sure. But I, I think I think Hellblade's this year, man. I, I just feel it in what? my guts. You literally said in Defining Duke that it wasn't. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, you literally said you're taking it back. You said, I know that I've been saying all year that it was coming this year. Uh, but I'm pulling back and I'm saying Hellblade 2 is next year. You changed just within two days. Wow. Oh, man. Was that... What, really? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yes. But maybe I was confused and we were talking about something else. Uh, I don't know because you're the one who actually said, I've been saying all year if I, I was a betting man, I was putting money on Hellblade in 2023. And you're like, but I've changed my mind. It's 2024. Nah, I do think Hellblade's this year. Oh, so now you're changing it. Ba- okay. okay. I'm changing it back. I'm changing it back. Hellblade's this year. All right. Uh, oh, no. that, that would make me incredibly happy. I would like now, that. Now, now, now that I'm focused, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm changing it back. It's this year. Okay. 
So it is this year, at least the Jazz. Uh, what, well, hey, hey, I said, I said, it, I said it's, to, I said it's this year or next year. I can't be wrong twice. <laughs> <laughs> it could be I cover, I cover, I cover both my bases. Could be twenty twenty five. Could be, could be twenty twenty five. Yeah, I think I no, I do think I do think it's this year. Okay, I do think it's this year. I think I think like, um. I don't know why I said it was. Maybe I was just being pessimistic yesterday. I mean, I do, also I it was like it was like three hours in and you were tired. So yeah, I think I might have just been. I don't know. I, I, I think it sounds like I was just on autopilot when I'm actually sitting there thinking about it. I do think it's a shit. Leaky Hum says MVG and Nate lied about Banjo, and so did Nick on Killer Instinct and Scalebound. I don't think anybody lies, and I would I trust MVG and Nate a lot. So maybe there there is a banjo game in development. If they say so, then I believe them. But it may not be any close to coming out anytime soon. And uh, well, you know, Nick is Nick, right? So <laughs> he's a Nintendo fan that runs an Xbox podcast. Make of that what oh, you will. Sure. So I oh H- Javier says he he meant fiscal next year. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> I, I was talking about it fiscally before, and now I'm talking about it the other way, Illy. So you, so you think it's what? <laughs> you, you think it's coming in November? Uh, yeah, I don't know about November. Maybe December even. Okay. But I, I do. In I, December. I think right. it'll. I think it'll be the tail end of this year. Yeah. Okay. That's not based. That's not based on any leaks or anything. I am going to go the opposite of you. I think it is early 2024. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. I think it's February or March. I think it leads okay. off. I think it's, it leads off Xbox's 2024 attack. Ooh, that attack. is, you have like you have you have the beginning of 2024 is Hellblade two, and you have the end of 2024 is Avowed, and then you have a bunch mm-hmm. of games in the middle, and I think that's that's the Alpha and the Omega. That's interesting. But I'll take Hellblade two this year if you're going to offer it to me because I do wonder, you know, what the ABK deal has like changed their plans right because there could you know you got you got a battle plan this they expected the deal to be closed by the end of june which means the new call of duty would have been a first party title whether or not it was in game pass is irrelevant maybe it would have maybe it wouldn't have right yeah and at that point if it's first party title maybe you don't want to put hellblade close to it so you have a plan a and a plan b but now Maybe the deal's not done, so you got to have uh, something else. And does Xbox go through another holiday without anything, a big game like Hellblade or something? So, I mean, I guess maybe I'm just trying not to get my heart broken, Jazz. Expecting this year only to end up coming next year. Uh, You're going to have plenty to play. Oh, of course, of course, of course. There's always there's always plenty to play. Uh, you can play, play Diablo. Yeah, we have a we have a, a, a huge super chat here from JD Gamer. It says oh Microsoft, please. Damn. There's a unique opportunity to create your own. This is how you share a game moment bigger than a hundred million dollar ad campaign. An exec needs to wear a hold the line shirt during the showcase. And say for those that held the line, we have something special. Bang, new IP. That's I like that. <laughs> you, you get King's Hold like the Line that. shirt that has kind of gone viral. I wonder yeah. how many T-shirts of those he he sold. You know, I hope we, a lot. Uh, yeah, I hope so too. And boom, Hold the Line. And you and you introduce a brand new IP that would I down for that. I mean, the Wandering Tower is a new IP it hasn't been announced yet. That would fit that mold. But I'm sure mm. you know. I mean, even like in Exile or a lot of these games that we may know about, they they haven't been announced yet, so it it would fit that. And I do think we will get a new IP announcement. I don't know what it would be because it's brand new. Uh, but yeah, I, I like I like where your head is at, JD Gamer. I like it. Phil on stage with King's T-shirt that says "Hold the Line." Could you imagine that? <laughs> How big that would be for <laughs> ILP and King? Because we know Aaron bought a shirt, but Aaron's probably not going to be at the show. Um, I think Aaron will be at the show. You think he'll be in the showcase? Like he he hasn't oh, been. Like no no no. He be won't in, be. He won't be, be fan fest. in the show. But he'll be yeah. he'll, he'll be in LA. So we have uh, the one and only Lady Foxfire. How you doing, Lady? Uh, she says, "Hey, Randy Jazz. I hope for at least a Gear Six teaser. Might not come out until 2024, or 2025. Overall, I want a great show and maybe Perfect Dark. 
I would love to see Perfect Dark. In fact, that's the next one on our list. So both me and Jez agree on Hellblade. We just disagree about the year. But, you know, end of this year, early next year, you know, it's it's very, very similar. Not a lot to wait. The Initiative, Jez. They are co-developing Perfect Dark with Crystal Dynamics. We haven't seen a peep, heard anything about it since they revealed it in 2020. It's one of the elusive five. Uh, do we think we get a uh, new look at Perfect Dark this showcase? I do. You know what? Wait, I think did we you say you some... do or we don't? I didn't hear. Yeah, we do. Okay, we do. We do. Oh, oh, that is interesting. I'm, I'm that, is, flopping again. that is a change from Defining Duke in two days. Okay, I'm, I'm all for that, though. <laughs> I'm all for it. I love it. I love it. Okay. But I, I, don't, I don't know why. I've been all, I've been all inconsistent now, but I, I don't know why. Maybe I was just literally on autopilot and, and just <laughs> giving them random stuff yesterday. I don't know. But honestly, like, I mean, it's been, how many years has it been now? I mean, they showed it Since off in they, 2020, so. Yeah, and that was CGI, right? Yes. So yeah, I'm 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 sorry, Defining Duke, but I'm changing my I'm changing my stance now. Um, and this again, this it might it might sound like uh, I'm just sort of like riffing on new information. Not I'm genuinely not. I think I was just like on autopilot. But when I when I actually sit here and think about it, and not like pick things at random because I'm half asleep because it was three in the morning. Um, I think like the the fact of the matter is, it's been a million years since they showed off that game in CGI. I think it's I think it's I think it's time that we see some in-engine gameplay, uh, not gameplay, just in-engine footage. I don't think I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be gameplay. I think it'll just be in-engine. Give us a taste of what it will be, and I think yeah, I think it will be there. So yeah, sorry, defining dude. Um, <laughs> uh, I, is, I need to. <laughs> I need this is to... our show, so you know only yeah. what we say on this show matters, and what we say on other shows don't matter. <laughs> only only Xbox too. <laughs> Well, it's going to be problematic, you know, because, um, oh man, I just, I just, uh, bro, I don't blame you because you should have done that was, show was, earlier, man. It was three o'clock in the morning. I, I understand, you know, who who remembers what they say at three o'clock in the morning either, right? Yeah, I don't know. I think like because in my head, I think I was kind of just like, you know, doing one, yeah, that that'll be there, and then the other one that won't be there. When I actually think about it and look at think about the how many years it's been, it does make sense, I think. But maybe you think differently, bro. I don't think it's gonna be there. As much as I want it to be there, as much as I would really love it to be there, to see how Crystal Dynamics and Initiative are going to bring back um Perfect Dark in twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four. I just not feeling good about this one. It's just uh, something tell me no because they they're, they're going to have a lot of new announcements. I mean Phil's talked about that. They're going to have a lot of updates for games that came out in 2020. And I I think Perfect Dark is next year. I think Perfect Dark and Everwilds and Unstated Decay 3's time is next year whilst the other games time this year. So that's the one we split on. So we split on the game at, I hope. I mean, I hope you're you're right. I hope Hellblade's this year and Perfect Dark is at the showcase. Well, bro, I'm right either way because I can just say, well, that was my real prediction. Oh, Jesus, this is what we're doing now. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> JD Gamer says Microsoft excite your base in a way that only things that have started from the grassroots can say. Those words hold the line on stage and wear that shirt before you deliver banger after banger after banger. Yeah, I mean, he's really JD Gamer really loving the hold the line stuff. So, uh, we have Compulsion Games. They are working on Project Midnight as leaked by you. Uh, all those many moons ago when I told you not to Your leak fault. it, you said, you said, yeah, I'm going to do it. I don't care what you say. Uh, I'm going to say we see this is going to be one of the new IP announcements. I'm, I'm going to say, yep, we will definitely see Compulsion's game and what they're working on in a CGI announcement. And what do you think? I think no. Whoa, we're 50-50 again on this one. What is going on? Okay, no from Compulsion. All right, give me your reasoning. What, why do you think we won't see it? I just think I leaked it too early. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
And I'm, I'm pretty sure I said no on defining Doom. You did well, say right? no. You did say no, yes. Yeah. But I, I, can I, I give you I don't think so, can I give you a reason why I think it will be? Go on then. Because they just hired a community manager. Oh yeah. Why remember. else would you hire a community manager? Unless you need someone to manage your community. And right now they don't have one. And the only way you would have a community is if you're about to announce your game. And then you can actually engage with your community because you just announced a new project you're working on. See, oh. I I hesitate to say anything's a lock, 100%. But I don't know why you would hire a community manager if you're not announcing your new project. Well, maybe they're going to spend the next year making memes and not please. managing the community. No, 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 no. I, I, no? I think them hiring a community manager is a sign that the game is going to be announced. Cause then you could, cause I don't think they've tweeted out since October of last year. And why would they? I mean, like what is compulsion? Like well, they have no reason to, but if you're going to well, announce the game, DLC. you're going to announce a whole bunch of stuff for it. Maybe have some interviews. You're going to want someone tweeting, someone managing that community for you. So to me, yeah, it doesn't make sense to hire somebody now. If you're going to reveal the game in 2024, it only makes sense right. to hire it now because you're about to announce it. I'm not saying gameplay. I'm saying a CGI announcement trailer. They can and and maybe it comes next year. In my mind, it launches next year. But I mean, it's tough to really nail things down because of how long games take to make and stuff. So maybe it's not next year. But in my mind, it is. But yeah, I think mm. Compulsion announces it, and I think it comes out next year. So that's me. We'll see who's right on nah. this one. I think it's way too early. Okay. I mean, bro, they revealed games in 2020, and it's three years later. What do you mean? Nothing is too early for Microsoft these days. Yeah, but they haven't even mentioned Compulsion yet. I think I don't. Th I think it's too early, but we'll see. We'll see. See, I don't know about you guys, chat, but I'm perfectly fine with announcing a game and then having the game released two years later. Like, announcing a game in 2023 and then releasing it in 2025. I think two years is the perfect cycle or even like one year, like they did with Fallout 4. But I, I don't mind two years. Fallout 4 was less than one year. Well, yeah, it was like it was six, six months. months. But you don't really get get that a lot. I'm perfectly fine yeah. with a, here's, uh, you know, uh, two years in, be uh, in between announce and release. Obvi like the, what Xbox did with three years going on four and five, that's way too much. But, I mean, that's what people wanted. They wanted the roadmap, and Xbox didn't have any games coming soon. So it was one of those things where it's like they had to. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, if we don't show announce these games, everyone's going to say we don't have any games for the Xbox Series X. And if we do announce it, eventually people are going to realize that these games are far out and they're going to be like, what the hell's going on? It's another one of those scenarios where it's like, okay. Yeah. But no, I mean, that's why even if, even if Compulsion's game is early and you leaked it early and it's not coming to 2025, that's fine. That's still two years. You announced in 2023, yeah. you have a gameplay trailer in 2024, and boom, you're releasing in 2025. I'd be fine with that, but I, I do think we'll see Compulsion's game. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Might be right. We'll uh, Caesar Cavero says, "I hope we see a Dead Rising revival. It will be in the Xbox showcase. Dead Rising is really attached to the Xbox brand. Great job, gentlemen. You did mention a Dead Rising thing recently. Uh, in did a I? tweet, in a tweet, you said Dead Rising might be coming back or something. You don't even remember yeah, what you man, even no. say anymore at this point. Why am I even? No, I don't." You, you, you think, guys? Do you remember Jazz mentioning something like a like a, a Dead Rising reboot? It was on Twitter. I I recall this. I mean, we all know he said this, right? Am I am I going crazy, or is Jazz crazy here? Uh, I'm literally not sure. Did I just tweet that out? You was a tweet, oh. not that long ago, really. I mean, if it was if it was me that tweeted it, you could easily find it because I don't tweet that much. But for you. Shh. You'd have to you'd have I've, to scroll I've, forever. So, somebody has to has random. to know what I'm talking about. Somebody in chat has to know uh, about your tweet. Yeah, dark dark CIA says yes. Okay. Uh, Mister uh, Owner says yes. Uh, Doom Reaper says yes. He played with our emotions. So yeah, I, I honestly can't remember. I mean, all you got to do is just go to your profile and just search Dead Rising. Yeah, I'll I'll you, do that. You know what? I'll I'm that. gonna do. I'll do that right now. Let's let's go. Let's go to your profile on Twitter. Let's find out together. Let's see. Search Twitter, Jez Corden, Jez, oh Jezablo, whatever that means. 
Jezablo. Dead. That's like Diablo, but Jezablo. Let's see. Dead Rising. Oh, yes. You tweeted out on May 7th, 2023, where you said, if you're a Dead Rising fan, there might be something on the horizon for you too. Oh, my God. Did I really say that? Yeah. Because, okay, so this was beca- <laughs> this was because Idle Sloth tweeted about a rumor from Special Nick about Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. You quote retweeted it and said, I heard a similar rumor about Metal Gear exclusively for PlayStation. Oh, Somebody replied was- to you and said, I got pushed into Xbox because of Dead Rising. Never liked Halo or Gears. And now I'm looking at PlayStation for Spider-Man. God knows which console will win me over. And then you said, if you're a Dead Rising fan, there might be something on the horizon for you too. And you have 54 retweets, 48 quote retweets, 262 likes, and 15 bookmarks. Okay, I do remember now. Someone says, uh, is it more like three, less like four? Three was awesome. Number two, zombies looked like somehow four regressed a ton. And you said, you heard it's a reboot. Capcom been on solid keel lately. Does this- right, okay. So this this came from the same place as my Metal Gear Solid info. Okay. Which turned out to be solid, right? Yes, very solid. Some would so, say Delta. Yeah, <laughs> well, Delta, Delta, whatever. I ain't calling it Delta. It's Metal Gear Solid 3, baby. I mean, they're, then they're, not, they're using all the same voice actors. So how, how can you really call it a new game? I, I don't think I don't think you can. I mean, not even the same voice actors. They're using the same voiceovers. So it, it's, it's, barely a, it's barely a remake, is it? It's just going to be... You know, a sort of rebuild. I don't know what you call it. But anyway, um, yeah, this came kind of from the same place as the Metal Gear Solid info. But again, I think this was really early. Uh, so you should have stopped me from talking about it. I mean, so, I sh- good job, yeah. Ram. I know, my fault. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying, you, you did say it. Okay, so next up. I don't up, think that'll be there. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, I mean, uh, this is this is what I think this could, is why it slipped out of my mind because it's just like this ain't coming anytime soon. I can just put, no. I can put that in the filing cabinet. What later. about uh, What about Obsidian? Obsidian makers of Grounded. I think I, at first I was like, I don't think Grounded is going to be there. But I hear we were at a party last night and somebody said that they got like a new boss. Boss is coming. So maybe there's going to be ground, Grounded content they're going to showcase. But uh, what mm. everybody wants to know, Avowed. Is Avowed going to show? I don't think Outer Worlds 2 will be there. Um, no. Avowed. I'm going to say yes. I think Avowed will be there. I think also Avowed either closes or opens the show. I haven't really decided I it, on. I what, think it opens the show. Oh, you think it opens the show? That would be a good opener, and I'm tend to be in agreement with you. I, I, yeah, I mean, because you could say it could close the show, but maybe it's too similar to Starfield. But you open with the vowed. Uh, I think we'll see gameplay. Actually, I think it's going to be a gameplay thing. I don't think it'll be an engine. I think it'll be gameplay. Um, yeah, I agree. It'll be gameplay. I think it comes 2024. I guess maybe where we might differ is I think it's end of the year 2024 you might think it's earlier than that right well i'm not sure i kind of go back and forth on this because i do know they refocused the game a little bit in 2021 but no we're in 2023 but development timelines are crazy and long and winding so yeah i i I would agree with you. You said it would be the tail end of 2024, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's their 2024 big game. Yeah. I mean, Phil's talked about, even at the, the interview, he talked about seeing a recent build of Avowed and stuff. So I, I, I feel I feel good that Avowed's going to be there. Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah be- World's Edge. Eh. They do Age. I could see Age 4 being there because they are announcing it this I mean, Age 4 for console is supposed to be this year. So I could see Age Four being there. Uh, and I think I'll, it'll be a quick Age Four. Yeah, it better be. We don't need no trebuchets on stage. On stage, so I could see Age Four being there, just like I could see Sea of Thieves and Grounded. You got, like I have to educate May about how popular I, that franchise. Well, sure, I get it, but you're, you're talking <laughs> on PC. I don't think it's that popular on console. Well, of course not. Okay, so uh, Mojang. I don't think we see anything well, from Mojang. Uh, Right, I think that them that could be even more stuff from World's Edge. Really, you think there could be like Age of Mythology retold was announced, right? Yeah, I think we could see Age of Mythology retold, or maybe something else. Age of Mythology, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I hope not <laughs> personally, but whatever. Uh, Mojang, I never know. It might appeal to you. Yeah, Mojang. Both of us, I think, are no on this. They have Minecon whenever they want or whenever they plan on doing it. 
I mean, I guess you could say Minecraft Legends, but I don't think so. I think they would save that for Minecon, and I don't tell you. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, think I Mine, don't think Minecraft yeah. Legends is going to be much of a yeah. thing, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, probably not. Playground games. I guess people might say Forza Horizon 6, but I think that's too early, right? This is motorsports year, correct? Yeah, I, I think I think they'll give they'll give Forza Motorsport the entire stage because it's been away for a while, and I think it's the opportunity for Turn Ten to remind everyone that they exist. Yes, <laughs> after so, being overshadowed by Playground for however how many years, fifty thousand years, yeah, something like that. So no years, Forza but. Horizon Six. I think that yeah. at earliest is next year. But the big game, Fable. You know, we had a discussion in depth about it earlier about whether or not Fable, are they teasing Fable? Now, I've said, I think Fable's going to be there. And you know what? I think Fable's going to close the show. I think they open with Avowed, and they close with Fable. Even mm-hmm. though, you know, I, I, I reserve judgment to change that for my video whenever I do make it. But I do firmly believe oh, Fable's going to so be we, at the we're, show. We're allowed, we're allowed to change our... Well, I mean, you 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 have your predictions that you're writing for Windows Central, right? So yeah, I'm going to change them all again. You better not. You better not. <laughs> I, I'm not changing, but I'm not changing if a game's going to be there. I'm just changing placement in the show. Is is what oh, okay. I would do. So, okay. I think I think Fable closes the show. Okay. Potentially. Well, if Fable is there, I agree, it closes the show. Okay. But I'm I'm kind of I'm torn about whether it's going to be there. You're torn. I'm torn. Really? Why are you so torn? Because I haven't heard a damn thing about it. I, I, I don't like. I don't like putting a mark on things without knowing stuff. Yeah, it's just a prediction, bro. It's not like you're saying it's there definitively, hundred percent. Tom Henderson r- rushed out to write an article. It's just a fun prediction about what you think. Right. Well, in that case, I think it is going to be there. Yeah. And I think it will be. I think it will be an engine. Yes. Yes, Fable. But that's not a leak. Avowed opening the show. Fable closing the show. All right, we're we're cooking with. If I'm wrong, don't get mad at me. That's just that's just. I mean, bro, we were completely my... wrong last year when like Microsoft's like, by the way, twelve months, <laughs> and all of our predictions were just like. Oh, that was hilarious. And like, yeah. and the funny thing is that you knew, we knew, you we were told like a month beforehand the show was fo- focusing on the next twelve months, and both me and you. We're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm sure they'll have other announcements. We didn't know that they literally only meant 12 months. <laughs> yeah. But I guess if we would have said that, and then, like, oh, by the way, they're only focusing on the 12 months, and then they actually did it, people would have been like, you guys, you know? But I didn't believe it. Even though we were told that they were focusing on 12 months, I didn't actually believe it. Because I was just like, yeah, sure, they'll announce the... Blah blah blah. Like I didn't actually think it was gonna be as hardcore as they went. Yeah. Uh Chinook guy says, I do not believe Fable is going to be there simply because of how Playground likes to market their games. It will be shown when it's going to launch. Yeah, but there's a difference between Forza Horizons and Fable, I think. Different style of game, different style of marketing. Uh you know, you don't necessarily need to to market Forza that far in advance. But something like Fable, Fable's gonna I mean, let's be like Forza doesn't have that much competition these days. It kind of rules the roost. So you don't, you know, but Fable, there's a lot of competition, even in the Xbox space, RPGs wise. And Mm. I do think it's a game that they want it to be massive. So I think it's the difference between, oh, we don't need to market Forza Horizon that far in advance because it's a known quantity. You don't need to market Forza Horizon six a year in advance. You can do it six months because everybody already knows it. But Fable? Unknown quantity. Even though it's based on a new, an older IP, a, a, a remake, we haven't seen a Fable game since... Jeez, when did Fable 3 come out? 2010, maybe? 2011? There's, a, there's, there's people now who don't even know what a Fable game is. So I, I do think they need a longer marketing cycle than your typical Playground release, personally. Because Fable, Fable hasn't been around for a long time. Uh, okay, so turn 10, obviously, Forza Motorsport. Uh, they've already said they'll be there, and they have the single-player reveal at the extended showcase on Tuesday. 
In Exile, Jazz, one of your favorite studios. Um, you talked about Project Cobalt and maybe like another game or something. Do you think uh, you think NX Isle is going to be ready to showcase their next big RPG? I think if they are there, it's probably CGI. Yes, I would agree. If it was there, and, it would be CGI. And I think it would be a great opportunity for them to set the tone and show sort of what kind of world they're making, which we all expect is Victorian-era steampunk. So, yeah. That's what I think. Do th- but I don't think it, I don't think it'll be an engine or gameplay. I think it's too early. But, but do you think hey, they've you th- been away for a while? So. Do you think it's going to be there? Do you think it shows up? Mm, I'm going to say yes. Gee, oh, okay. You're okay. All right. I guess. I don't know what I said in defining Duke. So yes, I think it's going to show up at the CGI announcement. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> So, <laughs> sure, I'm very interested in seeing seeing their game. Uh, this, is the, this is the thing about predictions. Like when I'm in a different frame of mind to what when I was with the defining do fellas, because it was it was like three in the morning or wherever it was. I was half asleep, and also I think sometimes either you or Matty or Cog said something that led me in another direction, maybe. But I'm feeling quite positive that. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm when I when I when I lay out the whole show in my head, and I think as well because there's only two of us, it's easier to go back and forth on this. I think I think I think they do do a CGI. I think that is I think there will be minimal CGI in the show, but if they do one CGI, it could be for an Exiles game because I think that is one game that will show up nicely in CGI. Yeah, I because think... it's going to be unique art it's going to be a new unique world new ip you know i think i think that is one game that will lend itself well to a cool ass cgi showcase um and also like I, I don't know if they're going to do humor as well but i think humor works quite well in cgi like the outer world 2 cgi announcement was incredible hilarious you know and i can just i can just imagine like some steampunk mech stamping on a pigeon in london or something as as the as the punchline and that's kind of in exile's brand of humor you know so i I, um i think any new announcements new game announcements would be cgi so if in exile turns up it'll be cgi if compulsion game shows up it'll be cgi so i'm gonna say i'm gonna go with you in exile even though we've been 50 50 on some of these i'm gonna go with you on this one because i actually kind of do want to see what they're working on um JD Gamer says, "What if the big surprise is that we get a double dose of Fable, a remake, remake, and a re or a remaster of the original trilogy and the reboot? I mean, it very well could be, very much mm. kind of in line with what I thought maybe a Gears collection and a Gear Six tease could be in the show. I mean, it's definitely possible. And uh, Joe Repco, aka Flame, says, if Fable isn't at the show, I'm going to be wearing clown shoes and swearing Xbox under my breath for a long time." That showcase tease <laughs> got me hype. I'm sure you aren't the only one who'd be upset. Uh, Exton yeah. the Otaku says, "Do you guys believe Fable is still co-op?" Uh, I mean, co-op uh, is sort of a staple for the games. They've done co-op since Fable Two, so Two. I would expect it to be co-op. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely expect there to be some form of co-op. Maybe not the whole game. Maybe there's sections you could do. So yeah. I, I I believe that. Um, let's see. And maybe I think I think it could be similar to two, where you're sort of like a, a companion of the main character, and you help you help the person in co-op, and it yeah, and it's not necessarily like a case of you know you progress the story together. Maybe I don't know. We have a uh, Undead Labs next. State of K three. I don't think they show up. I don't know. I, th- no, I, I think, think that's next year. Yeah, I think that's next year. I think like. State of Decay 3 and Perfect Dark and Everwild will be next year. Um, so I think we that's all the Xbox studios. And, you know, We talked a little bit about global publishing. Uh, third party is a little difficult to get into because you don't really know. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be indie titles with Game Pass stuff, right? ID at Xbox will be there. I mean, I, on Defining Duke, I gave like a thing where I was, uh, I said... I said Splinter Cell would be there. You know, that's not a real prediction. That's just like a, a hope and dream. I think I say this literally every year. Like Splinter Cell, 
you know, the, the screen goes dark and the, the little three green lights pop on and go ding. And it's like <laughs> Sam Fisher returns and it's like tune in to the Ubisoft forward for full reveal or something like that. I mean, I would die if that would happen, but I'm not like expecting Splinter Cell. Uh, so it's it's tougher to talk about third party things because you just don't know who is marketing for yeah, what and it, what could show up or and I think like that. Cyberpunk could show up for Xbox. Yeah, Cyberpunk maybe could. Uh, um, so I think like Silk Song, which could show up again, right? Maybe with yeah, an actual release, Song, release Cyberpunk. date. Maybe I want to see. I personally like. I don't. I don't really want to do too many third party predictions because you know, like you say, it's really hard to predict, and we could we could end up going through every single publisher on earth. I want to say I do want to. I know I know a lot of people here won't care about this, but I really do want to see Microsoft's commitment to the PC community. Maybe you know, get some Paradox strategy game announcement in there. You know, some of these other studios like Eleven Bit announce that. I don't know, Frostpunk Two's. Talk about Frostpunk two, you know. Talk about it coming to Game Pass or something like that, uh, because Frostpunk was a Game Pass launch, I think. Um, original, uh, not a launch, but it did come to Game Pass quite prolifically. I think it was one of the earlier big games they added into the service. So, an eleven bit studio, are just awesome. Everything they do is magic. So, um, I also think I also want to see, and I predict. That there'll be some Japanese stuff. Yeah. I mean, Persona yeah. 3 Remake, right? Persona 3 Remake's a shoe in but maybe there'll be some other Japanese stuff. Yeah. Maybe, 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 because I heard from software I was at the PlayStation event. Can mm. you imagine if they're at that Xbox mm. event? Like and it was just backwards. Armored Core 6 <laughs> trailer of some kind or something? Or... Yeah. Elden yeah. Ring DLC. Elden Ring DLC. That would be interesting. It would be nice to see. It would be nice to see from Soft Show for the next book show. Yeah, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe reveal of Jet Set Radio. There's, there's a lot of potential. I just know there's going to be indie games, and, and, and maybe maybe a... they announced Bloodborne Two as an Xbox yeah, oh, yeah. exclusive. <laughs> well, that was in their documents about you know ABK about <laughs> being a PlayStation exclusive. So, uh, Jay oh, Dredd says, "Will we yeah. see an Elite yeah. Series Three controller announcement at the showcase?" Like an accessories uh, thing because we know we're getting a Starfield we can controller. We talk about hardware. Right? Yeah, do you think there's gonna be any hardware like Slim Series S and X or accessory I stuff? Think, I think there could be some hardware, you know. Announcement, Except, like briefly, maybe not if it if it's like a big revision of a console. So say for example, they're either doing something like you know handheld, a Q light kind of thing, or they're gonna do the the streaming console like Keystone, or maybe they're going to do, I don't know, an Xbox Series X, an S Slim, or an X2, or S2, I don't know, something like that. That would be in the show. But I think something like a Series controller, they are going to talk about that. That I would expect to be in the extended showcase. I don't think that will be at the main event. I think that's going to be chock full of gaming and big announcements to sort of... Re- revitalize the the image of the platform and the brand a little bit um i don't know if you think differently about series elite and hardware announcements i don't think we'll what see hardware this year on? i mean not at all not even accessories well i mean the thing is we know we're getting a starfield controller and a starfield headset right. and is that going to be at the starfield direct or is that going to be during the showcase itself do you want to That'd announce... be during the direct, I think. Yeah, but do, I you, think... do you want to announce a whole bunch of new controllers and stuff? I don't think it's... I don't see I don't see a series nah, three just yet. Have you... I mean, at the, at the Starfield direct, I could see them talking about the Starfield controller. Cause sure. In the past, when they've done, like, the, the Fallout segments... When they did the Fallout 4 segment, that was when they announced Fallout Shelter, I think. And then they... They shadow dropped Fallout Shelter, and then they talked about Fallout Four, and then they were like, "Oh, by the way, it's coming out in six months or something like that." I think, off the top of my head, maybe I'm getting my Bethesda stuff mixed up. I, I can remember that, but I can't remember what happened last week. I don't, I don't know what the hell's wrong with my brain. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, I don't think there'll be much hardware presence in the main show. But who, who knows? Maybe they will announce a new Xbox. Of some coin, coined, yeah, slim, because there's a lot of contention about the Series S right now, and we we're, we're missing a lot of stock. Maybe we're missing stock because they've committed to 
a new version of the of the platform. I don't know. I don't know. I don't we'll know. See. We'll see. Uh, Bethesda. Still not really sure if they're going to be there or not. Uh, so we know Bethesda Game Studios will be there with Starfield. That's going to be probably a 30-minute presentation. Uh, just really quickly, Jez. Frame rate on the Series X. Will it have a performance mode or will it be stuck to 30? Well, I think I said this on Defining Duke. I think there will be a 60 frames mode, Ooh. some kind of performance mode. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot they can do to get it to 60 frames. Um, what? Because one of the issues they've got with 60 frames is that every single object in in the creation engine world is interactive, right? And so a lot of the overhead that you typically be using for the for CPU that goes off to okay. In this room, there are a hundred wa- space watermelons. So we've got to dedicate some processing to these space watermelons. Um, but we saw that go out of the window with Fallout 76 because a lot of that CPU was like, and and this is a very simplistic way of describing it, of course, but some of that CPU was like, okay, well, we've got to strip out some of the the physics here because the CPU is going towards handling the multiplayer. And, you know, at launch, it had a very hard job of it. Um, You know, the, the the way it handled the multiplayer overheads is really killed the performance of the game and that was without all the ragdoll objects so i love fallout 76 has like a lot of those ragdoll objects stripped out of the game um and i think like if they are gonna do something like that in starfield maybe they could do something similar where it's like okay well maybe in performance mode the game has less dynamic objects or something like that but i kind of feel like microsoft will be trying to put their trying to because they always talked about the series x was this monster and then redfall launched its 30 frames i kind of feel like this would be a good way of saying look we know you're like 60 frames and here's starfield being 60 frames and i kind of feel like if it wasn't going to be 60 frames or at least as an option they would have gotten out and said it by now i don't think they'd they'd put a dampener like that in the presentation but i could be wrong because this is microsoft fair enough I'll just say ranks. I'll just say uh, I I'll just say 30 frames. I'll just say it's 30, and I will be so happy. If Are it's you 60. trying to like reverse jinx it? Or something? No, I'm just this is my you got you got this. Oh, you think there's a performance mode? I'll say it's just 30. That's fine. Uh, Scott the gamer dude says, "How about the family plan at the showcase for Xbox Game Pass? Mm, it could be potential. Mm. I mean, maybe I don't know. I I I don't think the family plan will be there. Okay, because I think they will. I think they will sneak that out. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I don't think they'll announce that with fanfare because they will want to roll that out carefully. They've already shown they could roll it out right now if they wanted to, and the reason they haven't is because they they're exploring how it impacts developers. They're exploring how it impacts the service's profitability and stuff like that. So I think when they do start rolling out the family plan, it's going to be a slow rollout. They'll do it country by country, and they'll probably do it quite low key. And then once they've got the data that okay, it's not going to blow up our, it's not going to blow up the service or kill the profitability and all that kind of stuff, because we see Netflix struggle with this right now. Because Netflix has announced their, their no more password sharing for people outside your household, for example. So um, I think Microsoft's going to be cautious, and I think announcing the family plan at the show kind of is the opposite of cautious. So no, I don't think the yeah. family plan will be announced there. Um, we have uh Jake saying, "Will the Series S get some love or just the X?" I would imagine just the X. I can't sixty no on the Series S. No, not gonna happen. Um, hey, I think maybe. I so, think maybe the Series S too, bro. Tango GameWorks sounds like maybe there's some Hi-Fi Rush expansion that might saddle drop. I saw achievements got added to the Steam version, ten new achievements. So potentially a shadow drop of some kind at the show. Otherwise, I don't mm-hmm. expect anything from them, right? Um. It's software. Here's a question: what? Will it be free or paid? Expansion? Paid. It'll be paid. I would think. I yeah, I think. Uh, it's or, software or included with Game Pass, maybe. Maybe. Sorry. What about its software? What are you thinking? We see their new uh, game, whether it's Doom or Quake or. Because I sort of feel like no, I sort of feel like we're not going to see it this year. Yeah, I I agree. I think I said this on Find Duke as well, so I'm at least being consistent. Yeah. I don't think it'll be there. And I think if they do have a Quake thing to announce, that'll be a Quake Con, Quake Con I would yeah. imagine. 
Arcane, probably not. Uh, I don't think they're going to talk about Redfall, because why bother? And I don't think Death Deathloop 2's at that point yet. So I'm going to say Arcane doesn't show up. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I don't think we see Arcane. Okay, so no Arcane. They're in the, they're in, they're in the doghouse. I don't think we see Roundhouse either. Uh, but then it leaves... I think sh- Roundhouse is basically yeah. going to be the, the people fixing Redfall, probably. Uh, but we do have Machine Games. And we know they're working on Indiana Jones. And I do think we see Indiana Jones. I do think we yeah. see the game. I think it, we I think we see a CGI trailer for it of some kind. Uh, the, the, my prediction for Indiana Jones, I don't think it's CGI. I think it'll be an engine, Okay. first of all. Second of all, I think they will, in the trailer, it will say, come into Xbox and PC or Windows, right? Okay. And then Nick will be all over Twitter he'll, saying, he'll, I was he'll right. He'll be coming at you. He'll yeah, be coming yeah. at you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, But I think li- afterwards... It'll come out that it is coming to PlayStation All right. in a press release or something. Did you hear what he said about you yesterday where he said your only redeeming quality is that you look like Post Malone before the tattoos or something? <laughs> yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Uh, I Zenimax, think I many redeeming qualities. Zenimax that. Online, do we think we see their new game that they're working on, that they've been working on for, for a while? Mm, I'm going to say no. I agree with you. I don't think we see it. I'm very interested in seeing what that is. Very interested. Yeah, and uh, one thing I know I, I want to say as well: it's not Lord of the Rings. I think a lot of people, yeah, a lot a... of people thinking it's Lord of the Rings, or or there's some going to going to be some Xbox Lord of the Rings game. Nah, this is going to be a completely new IP. Microsoft likes owning 100 percent of the things they do. Um, so no, it won't yeah. be Lord of the Rings. So um, yeah, I think that's like all the studios about what we think. What's opening, closing the show, all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, we went through them all. Um, if you guys enjoyed everything that you heard, make sure you hit the like button for us, please, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Because we got a whole bunch of Xbox Two coverage, even coverage for myself from video wise for this to showcase uh, coming up. And uh, let's 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 transition to some Patreon questions, shall we? So, hope, yeah, hope everybody is. It's having a good day. Going to have a good weekend. I know everyone's going to be playing some Diablo. Oh, someone someone said we forgot Double Fine. Oh, Double Fine. Okay, Double Fine. Actually, I, yeah, I did skip over them. Uh, Mike says, what about Roundhouse? Me and Jez both say no. Double Fine? I did say during Defining Duke we would see one of their games. And I'll stick to that. Yeah. I don't think we will. I think okay. it could be a while. All right. So, I say one Double Fine game. Jez says no. So, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, the thing about this show is they can't they can't rely on Starfield and Redfall again. It's all new stuff. So, you know, the thing I'm looking forward to is I want the roadmap. I want to know what's coming this year and what's next year. I want some updates on some 2020 games. I want some brand new yeah. announcements. I want some cool Game Pass stuff. You know, like, not asking for much, re- realistically, <laughs> at all. Like, really, it's not. It's like, what's coming after Forza Motorsport? You have... 23 studios you have all these games that you announced three years ago is that you can't update them yet like i'm not asking for like literally every single studio because i know things it's like all right well show me what's next year announce some stuff that might be farther out i want to see some gameplay for avowed and hellblade and a fable would be amazing you know i mean i i think they're gonna have a a, a quite a good show you know I, i really do but then again i thought that they um would have an amazing show last year, and it was kind of like, eh. uh, mm-hmm. let me let me check to see if I missed any super chats. Hold on, Jez, uh, talk for a minute. I gotta I gotta answer this thing. What what thing? Phone? Is Ron on the phone? Oh god, oh god. Tango hiccup. Uh, we did we did we did mention Tango uh, quickly. Um, I think Ron said that he didn't expect them to be there, but there is that rumor that. Um, there is that rumor that Tango is working on an expansion for Hi-Fi. I'm back. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see, let's see if I missed any super chats. Uh, Simon Brady says the Bond game from Ion Interactive will be there. Game Pass? Question mark. In my opinion, there will be a future acquisition. Will Xbox have a superhero game like Captain America? I don't really think. Often... Uh, no, Sorry, I don't really think we would see. I don't know. I don't think we'll see James Bond game. And I don't think it would be in Game Pass. And I don't no. think Xbox would have a superhero game. So, 
No, I think if Xbox ever does a superhero game, it'll be like, um, it'll be their uh, their own IP. I would think. Oh, Rand, we did miss we did miss some news before we go to Patreon stuff. If you want to talk about it quickly for like ten minutes or something, although this might be one of the Patreon questions anyway. Yeah, one one says, "Hear me out." Banjo third person shooter made by Coalition. Uh, Fred Mellon says, is Project Sh- Shalon real? Also, is it still happening if it is real? I mean, I think it's real, but may not be with the Xbox. So. Yeah, it was definitely real, but I think it might have just been a pitch and not actually confirmed to be funded by Microsoft. Um, so I announced that too early, so that's my bad. Okay, no, so we'll what, was, uh, we'll what was the news we missed while we were live? Um, not while we're live. We... We um this might be a Patreon question anyway. Okay. But um did we talk about it already? The Jeremy Hunt meeting with Brad Smith in the eh, UK. I mean, no, not yet. Uh let, let's see if there's any questions. Let's go through the questions for Patreon. Okay. We have uh Lazar Wolf. He goes, What's one crazy but realistic new game that will be at the Xbox showcase? Mm, crazy but realistic? Yeah, crazy but realistic. Kind of okay. That's uh, interesting. I think Banjo would fit into that category. I think. I think. I think it's kind of. I think it's kind of crazy. To to make a three D, kitty platformer in the year of our Lord. I think at the end of the day, kids don't care for that kind of game anymore. They want to play Fortnite. They don't want to play a single player, three D platformer. So if they did do a Banjo game, I think it would be crazy personally um so i suppose that fits into that category you know but i don't know if rand's got another idea on that i don't i mean interesting question crazy but realistic let's i'll just say um rise two two. rise two oh rise two yeah rise two there is kind of some talk that it might be a real thing so why not it'd be crazy maybe it's realistic i'd like to see it uh, I mean, after after seeing that Alan Wake trailer, I really want to see, I really want to see Quantum Break two, because it seems like Remedy's really stepped up a level. Uh, yeah. S- Silas says Nether Realm Studios took notice of Jez's leak and moved him and the misses to Chicago in order to oversee the development of Scalebound's protagonist Drew as a DLC character. Would the two of you be friends, hanging out, or remain podcast life partners? I mean. <laughs> If Jez was here in <laughs> Chicago, we'd probably do the show live. I'd probably section off like a part. Person. Yeah, I'd get some camera sets up and whatever, and it'd be like an in-person show. That'd be, that'd be that would, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, we could use the Patreon money to like actually make a full-blown studio. Yeah. That'd be really sick. Yeah. Uh, Parker Griffith, if you could put each other into one real vehicle, being forced to drive it for the rest of their life, regardless of repairs or cost to own, what would it be? I mean, for Jez, it's got to be a clown car, right? <laughs> <laughs> a vehicle. Yeah. I would put Rand in the the Pokemon Boeing oh, Seven Four Seven. Right. Uh, you're gonna give me an airplane? Yeah, it's a Boeing Seven Four Seven, but it's the po- Have you not seen this po- this Pokemon? I think I Boeing? might have. You know, just because so you're... It's, it's like a Pokemon air, air flight. Like every everything inside is Pokemon themed. It's like the perfect plane for you, man. Yeah. I mean, personally. I, I don't know. You're from the UK, so like I would give you like one of those like James Bond cars or something. You know? I like a roll what does he drive? He drives an Aston Martin, doesn't yeah, he? I like Aston like Martins, yeah. Something cool. like that, yeah. That's what I that's what I would give Jez. Uh Jay Foley. I, ha- gi- I give Rand a big, big American Humvee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I sometimes sometimes I see people in, in Germany especially driving those huge American Ford pickup trucks and you never see them in Britain, and when I see them, I just like, God damn, that's why do people buy those for residential use? So we just live in the middle of nowhere. I don't know, maybe they're farmers or something. But we got Jay yeah. Foley. Happy Friday! Favorite E3 showcase reveal moment you will always remember. Well, that's easy for me. Getting a million gamer score. Hell yeah! The best yeah. E3 moment of all time. Although realistically maybe when Final Fantasy 13 was revealed for Xbox. Because at the time... Oh, really? Bro, like, if you're talking about craziest thing you never thought would possibly ever happen, at that point in time, I was still like, I'm going to have to get a PS3 to play Final Fantasy. And then it was announced for Xbox. 
And it, mm. people went, and I still remember that. I still remember. I was, I was sitting there. I'm like, no effing way. And I remember like Neil Gaff melting down because all the PlayStation fanboys there were like, these games are only up. And it was just like, Square Enix has betrayed us. And it introduced that meme. So yeah, I always remember that one. What about you? That's hilarious. Well, I, I kind of felt that way about Metal Gear Solid, not Metal Gear Rising, because that was a big, oh. a big, oh my God, didn't expect that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, uh, Killer Instinct, man. Killer I was, Instinct, I was yeah. watching, yeah. yeah, I was watching the show with a good friend of mine and, uh, Pete, um, and, uh, now, now that we're both working 24, we used to play games all the time, like Battlefield and stuff like that. Now we're both working 24 seven and it's, it's hard to catch up, but we're both watching the Xbox showcase and uh killer instinct came on, you know, we're both, you know, full of nostalgia for killer instinct. And we're just like, Oh my God, it was just like the Maximilian video, the famous Maximilian killer instinct reveal reaction video on YouTube. It was exactly like that. And it was, it was just an amazing moment, but. Yeah, hopefully we'll get another one of them this year. That would be cool. Killer Instinct reveal would be absolutely, absolutely great. I mean, not a lot of people will say like the backwards compat for the Xbox One because that came out mm. of nowhere and people, people went, people was like, "Well, wow, that's that's crazy." Yeah. But for me, it's always Final Fantasy. I still remember yeah. all that. Uh, we have Parker Petrov. Post ABK, do you see Microsoft looking to acquire support studios to further strengthen their existing teams? By having in-house support studios, you could help get projects across the finish line, produce supplemental content, or support finished products. I mean, we just I saw. Know, didn't um, we just see one of the Bethesda studios sorry. just buy a support studio? Recently? Yeah, Bethesda Zenimax Online just yeah. set up a satellite studio in Hungary, which is um, really surprising. Um, but I, I do think like Microsoft is acutely aware of how difficult game development is becoming. Um, and how bloated some of the engines are becoming. Like, Unreal Engine is often criticized for being this crazy bloated program, but increasingly it's like, well, what else is there? You know, um, you know, to meet to meet people's expectations for graphical quality and stuff like that. But I do think over the next decade, AI. I mean, Bobby Kotick was absolutely lambasted this past week because Bobby Kotick gave, gave an interview to some magazine. I can't remember the magazine off the top of my head, but to paraphrase him, he talked about like tools they're developing where like AI can generate content for games mm -hmm. and lo loads of people freaking out saying, Oh my God, it'll strip the soul out of the gaming gaming. And David, uh, Guida, I think his name is, um, from, uh, who, who made, uh, he worked for Bioware. I think he made Mass Effect one, if I remember correctly, and maybe Dragon Age origins or wrote it, he, he was like criticizing, saying AI will never replace writing and gaming and stuff like that. But I think like a lot of, a lot of like, I, I've said, I've said before on, um, I've said before on the show, I think like you could use AI to do like the dumb stuff, like make a, I don't know, a floor texture or a carpet or, or, a, or a toilet model or something like that and have a human tweak it. I think AI has to play a part in the future of game development. And I think Microsoft's probably exploring how they can leverage some of that exclusive rights to open AI to make that happen. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I think it's still, I, they're going to make more acquisitions. I don't know if they'll be support studio related, but they probably should. They probably should make some. Uh, Tuper yeah. says, uh, Topper says, I think the handheld planned by Lion Crying Manscaped Trim Ryan <laughs> for PlayStation owners <laughs> is clever. Eliminate the need to cloud servers by pushing the cost to PlayStation owners needing their own system. Do you think that could end up being more successful than xCloud in the short term? I mean, they did talk about how they have big plans for cloud, and I'm not that, that handheld Project Q is not that. It's remote play. Uh, Sony really hasn't I'm revealed... I'm shocked about that, by the way. Yeah. They've got their own cloud streaming service and they release a handheld which doesn't use their own cloud. Probably. What the hell are they thinking? Maybe they can't. You uh, maybe they can't do it at scale yet. Yeah, maybe. So that's a big issue too. Yeah, I think it came Even out Microsoft that it was like Microsoft can't do it at scale, really. Yeah, that's why they don't market the damn thing. Um, I don't think the Q Lite is going to be more successful than XCloud in the short term because a lot of people look at that device as useless. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, 
Well, Xbox is increasingly getting involved with these handhelds. Yeah. Because I got the Asus Republic of Gamers Ally, and I was surprised to discover that once I signed in to my Microsoft account on the Asus thing, it gave me three months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah, that did come packaged with it. Yeah. Yeah, so... Clearly, that's that's a that Microsoft is heavily exploring that as bringing Xbox to the 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 mobile oriented market, and I think it's the right play because a should be cheaper because you don't have to use cloud servers. B, it's more versatile because you don't have to use cloud servers, which get disconnected. And C, well, there isn't a C because the A and B are so great. So yeah. <laughs> uh... So Achievement says, just for fun, if we follow the trend of Playground, uh, the Forza Horizon Studio making RPG, and the Sobo the Flight Simulator Studio making an action-adventure game, then what other type of game would Turn turn 10 make? Maybe they do the Kart Racer, or dare I say Banjo. I think Turn 10 (laughs) is strictly forever and only going to make Forza Motorsport. I don't think they have any aspirations to do anything else other than that. I I, I tell you, I would love to see them make some kind of because they 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 make simulation racing, right? Right. What if they made like I don't know a, a simulation? I don't know, like a Sim City kind of game, or something like that. Strategy game, PC game. I don't know. But speaking hypothet, that's speaking hypothetically. I think in reality, yeah, they're not going to be developing anything beyond yeah. Forza Motorsport. Is Those Forza? guys are super car obsessed enthusiasts. Yeah, I'm very interested in seeing their single player like campaign stuff maybe it'll make me interested in motorsport in a way i've never really been interested in it Uh, katriox says do you prefer games to be high fantasy or grounded in reality um that's a good question i saw i personally i flip back and forth right because i think um i think uh you know high fantasy is that is that is that more like game of thrones where it's sort of like aggressively realistic sort um, of. I don't know I, it's something like Jedi Survivor high fantasy because that's not grounded in reality I guess it depends on the on the question nah, I wouldn't I don't know well I sort of I sort of flip back and forth like if we're talking about something that's a little bit more gritty and, and realistic ish that sort of you know plays into um, I suppose less cartoony I mean I, I the, the, these are def- defined terms but i just don't know exactly what they mean like yeah. high fantasy and the difference but i love i love games like dragon age and stuff but then sometimes i love games like warcraft which are a little bit more cartoony and a little bit more ridiculous like in warcraft i'm i'm warcraft asks me to believe that a it's a game it's a world all about magic and fantasy but then you've got goblins running around with mechs and ca- and ca- selfie cameras and stuff, stuff like that and elves with with selfie sticks taking selfies on vacation so you know like sometimes the the more ridiculous fantasy is fun too but um i think really i do prefer it when it's a little bit more realistic a little bit more grounded yeah diablo I mean, is exactly that yeah i guess ground more grounded um I, I guess it really depends like do i want am I, i'm more a fan of of that stuff than say like sea thieves and how it looks or grounded and how it looks like I, I guess i would want a more uh <laughs> a more grounded in reality approach but you'd have to give me examples and i'd be like okay well i like this or that as long as the games are good you know that's all that really matters uh tricks are for trey says new to patreon you guys do great stuff thank you says, I found out that you guys know Roby Tech, a.k.a. Roby, and I work for him. Small world. Anyways, what surprises oh, do wow. you think will be at the show? Okay, Roby. I, um, yeah, Roby, Justin Roby. I used to stream with Roby yeah, on Mixer used back to. in the day. Mm-hmm. Justin Roby's a big shot now. He does, he he does marketing videos Super for huge. Intel. Yeah, he's a huge, huge. Super huge, dude. He does, um, he does all over Amazon's. YouTube. Amazon shopping channel thing, you know, like on the during when Amazon does those, those sales, Roby, Roby does the presenting for Amazon and stuff. So Mixer was really a big catalyst in Roby transitioning to presenting from, uh, from um, you know, he, he he made Windows Media Player for God's sake for Windows XP back in the day. 
Oh, and he also worked on uh, a small, a little game you might have heard of called Two Human. Oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a producer on that. He's told me some fun stories about the game, <laughs> development of that game. Surprises, but, um, but yeah. Surprises. Fable. I'm going to go with Fable. Surprises. Well, is that much of a surprise now? But whatever. Is that much of a surprise? I don't know. I'm don't still know going. Fable. Point. Whatever. That'd um, be a surprise. A surprise. Oh, man. I, I mean, I don't know. There's lots of, I'd like to see. I'd love for the Killer Instinct rumors to be real. I don't think they are, but I very much love for them to be real. Um, a surprise for me would be... Uh, a surprise for me would be Square Enix showing up and being like, okay, we've sorted things out. Here's Final Fantasy VII Remake. Here's Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn Here's, or the launch date or whatever. That would be a big surprise for me. And I think that would be really cool, you know... A, a, a cool example of Microsoft working to address feedback. But, yeah. Uh, that's pie in the sky stuff. Omen says, if half the games of the PlayStation Showcase launched on PS Plus on launch, do you think the Showcase would have been received significantly better? Mm, not from, like, the hardcore PlayStation fans. Uh, I don't... No, I don't think so. I think they were really like, this is it. Only Spider-Man and two other things that were CGI trailers and Gran Turismo trailer? I don't think so. Uh, William Gimzui, Gim, I'm sorry if I screw up your last name. Any news on the Dolby Atmos delayed sound affecting Xbox, Jez? I don't think so, right? Not yet. Um, I'm. This is a question I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna ask them straight in at, uh, in LA. I'm gonna be like, "What are you doing about Dolby Atmos on Xbox?" Because I do get this question a lot. Um, but we'll see. It's the kind of thing that PR wouldn't be able to help me with. I just need to get in front of someone and just say, "What's going on here?" Yeah. We have Lee, Doing San- all Lee Sanders says, Rand and Jez, this is a paragraph, but to make it more appeasing to the eye, it's better listed for you guys to read out. The quick fire Xbox two, yes or no, will the publisher be at the showcase questionnaire fun? And he listed all the studios that we just went through. <laughs> so we already answered your question. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to skip oh, that sorry, part. Uh, Rand, don't read this part unless you want to. Anyone reading this, feel free to play along. Reply below to this. We'll, track for ultimate showboat showboatiness we'll track this for you all second sub question but more reminder to get jez's views on a newbie's guide into diablo 4 and what to recommend we actually talked about that too as well so we hit we hit up your question yeah, yeah so. that's so this is why we should read the questions before the show and try and work them into the show yeah. like a professional podcast like sure. defining duke does yeah but defining duke also doesn't read everybody's question like they only pick like five know? out of all the questions they get so, but they've got like 50 billion patrons. Sure, patrons. but I always like, <laughs> you know, I'm very much like, hey, people paid for something. They should get what they paid for. And yeah. we do the questions at the end so people who aren't live can then immediately find it for the timestamp about, hey, I yeah. asked this question. Here's the answer, right? True. So, a Dio game. Hey, everyone. For those in Toronto who want to see the showcase in person, since FanFest is skipping town this year, I rented a cozy screening room. Authentic cinema projector and sound, but a smaller screen. Tickets are available for free at uh, this. He has a link here. Rand and Jazz, do you reckon we see anything announced from Bethesda beyond Starfield and the traditional ESO Fallout 76 updates? Yes, me and Jazz both said Indiana Jones. So Yes, Indy. Indy, Indy, give it to us. Uh, Jasper Shap. And I think it's multiplayer. You think, still think it's multiplayer. Jasper Shap. Hi, guys. What do you both think of the rumor that n- the new Zenimax Online project could be a Lord of the Rings MMO? Do you think that this is possible? And if it is, would you be interested in it? For me, this would be a dream come true kind of game. Thanks and have a great show. Well, we answered that too. It's a good I thing guess. you answered that, Jez, and said yeah, and said no. So I mean, yeah, Microsoft likes to own their shit, and if yeah. they're making an MMO which has merchandising opportunities, you know, I, I don't think they'd, I don't think they'd do it. Yeah, but hey, could be wrong. I mean, I, 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 I would like it. I just hope it's not an MMO, please. Uh, <laughs> what if it's Halo? Hmm. Well, they did say what new. If, what if they said a, new what IP. A... So Halo's not a new IP, and neither is Lord of the Rings, oh. for that matter. Uh, Taylor mm. Heath says, "Hey guys, this is more a question for Jez. Do you have a Diablo Four clan setup right now? Would love to play no. with the Xbox community, Xbox Two community. P.S. Y'all are by far my favorite podcast. Rand, you are top tier gaming podcast host, and Jez, you are the mayo to the fries, if you know what I mean." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. For I don't have a. Yeah, don't have a clan yet. Um, we might make a Battle Shrimp Windows Central clan. Ooh. Uh, um, but which you know, if we do do Battle Shrimp clan or whatever, then 
probably link it to Xbox Two as well. But I don't know yet. I don't know. We'll see. But thanks mm. for your, thanks for your interest. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, Kraken fifty six. Hey guys, I've been following the industry closely since twenty eleven. This feels like Xbox is about to start shifting the narrative. Obviously, the games need to be good once they come out, but it starts with high quality showcasing. With Fable seemingly te- being teased, the expected lineup looks really good, especially compared to PlayStation's recent disappointing show. If the big games show up well, is this the showcase that will start to shift opinions about Xbox and the hardcore in the media? No. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's about those games, as you mentioned, actually being good once they come out. Especially after coming off of Redfall, which some people were going back and forth about whether it looked good or not and we saw the end product so yeah it would be great to see hellblade 2 looks amazing avowed looks incredible fable 3 look or fable looks like everything i ever wanted indiana jones machine games is on fire and all the other stuff Hmm. but for a lot of people it's going to be like i won't truly turn my opinion around until i have these games in my hand and phil said as much on the kind of funny interview where he said our job's not finished until you have the controller in your hand and you're smiling so i don't think it will shift people will say xbox had a good show dot 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 but they have to deliver and that will be what people say right jazz yeah i agree yeah it's all it's all about the games at the end of the day and you know all the all the other stuff is sort of extraneous you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm uh, Moronic- I mean, like all the Discord about um, the Discord and the discourse about Redfall, you know, and where, whether my, whether Microsoft was, you know, too hands off or whether they they meddled too much in their studios. None of that would have mattered if the game had just been good. No, no one would be saying like, why can't why can't Microsoft do this? It's all about good games at the end of the day, and that's what that's what we're here for. Yep. Uh, Moronic Donkey 99 Jez, convince Rand to give me some of his YouTube million so I can buy Diablo 4. Hey, buddy, I didn't even be, I'd buy Diablo 4. So $90 <laughs> well, is just too steep for me, you know? I, str- I streamed Diablo 4 yesterday, and I was kind of like, well, I want to do a giveaway. But then I couldn't figure out how to, like, buy a key or gift the game or whatever mm. um, in a safe way. So I'm, I'm still trying to kind of figure out figure that out. I might try and just ask someone at Blizzard if I can buy a key from them that I know will work. But right. um, if you are interested, um, I'll try and get I'll try and get some keys so I can do a giveaway. But to be honest, it might end up on Game Pass anyway. So I mean, eventually, if they acquire ABK. Yes. So Darsman says I have found some great positive YouTubers like you, Mister Maddie Plays, and Arlo that focus on Xbox and Nintendo without being toxic. And acting as if competition must must die, but I have not been able to find any PlayStation focused YouTuber that isn't simply a hater of other platforms. As a result, I end up getting my YouTube PlayStation news from more general gaming streamers like Spawnwave. Can either of you possibly recommend some PS focused YouTubers with a more positive personality? Sure, Mr. I mean Badbit. We just had Mr. Badbit on. Um, he does a, a PlayStation podcast called The Trophy Room. I think every Wednesday. Uh, so you could, you could check him out. Uh, he's, he's really good. And you can check out mystic Ryan on YouTube. He's probably the biggest PlayStation content creator and he's pretty good as well. So I'd, I'd recommend those two. Uh, on Twitter, really like, um, PlayStation bra, uh, PlayStation bra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's very good. E-R-A-H. as well. I've never seen him console war one time. Like obviously he defends the sony from fud like the any anyone else would but um defend xbox but i've never seen him console war or bash xbox and he's a really cool dude and i think he has his own site as well like yeah he does site. the play uh, like the playstation broadcast or something but yeah so yeah, yeah. uh him mr Badbit, and mystic ryan uh i think are, are are your choices to go to uh sj dub since there are a lot of questions already asked i'll just say thank you too for everything you do have a safe trip to the u.s jazz and hold the line Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Luke says, uh, he says, NASA with, I, I don't even know, he says, good evening in Welsh, Justin Rand. I will not speak that the name of that game, but dragons are awesome. Living whales all my life. Dragons are a constant. So what are your top five games that have dragons in it? 
Dragon Age. Yeah, I Dragon think Age. The best Dragon game. Uh, um, I've been playing Dragon's Dogma a little bit on and off. Is that got dragons um, in it, obviously. Bro? Dragons? Yeah, Dragon's Dogma. You, you, you think so? Yeah, I then mean the game. The game opens with a kind of dragon. Or it's a chimera. How about pra- Panzer yeah. Dragoon Order? Never really played that. Yeah, that'd be one of them. Dragon Age, Panzer Dragoon Order. I'm trying to think of other games with dragons. World of Warcraft. Uh, I mean, sure for you. Let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna type. I'm gonna go to Google and type in games with dragons and see what pops up. See if I played any of these. Monster Hunter. Spyro. Okay, Spyro. Yeah, Spyro's really good. Elder Scrolls Skyrim. How could I forget about that? Skyrim. Uh, it's got some dragons. Elden Ring. Uh, Iran didn't play Elden Ring. I play. I love Elden Ring. Yeah. See, I just totally forgot about it. Yeah. Elden you, Ring, you t- Skyrim. You told me that you didn't like it because it had too much combat and not enough walking. I love it, bro. I love it. Dark Souls has uh, dragons in it. Yeah, so there we go. Elden Ring, you know, really Skyrim, creeped me out Spyro. in Dark Souls. What? In my Dark Souls playthrough. What? That, that like, undead, cut-in-half dragon that you find. What the hell was all that about? That was really creepy. There's some really creepy dragons in, 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 in uh, Dark Souls. Bikwa from N14 says, Hey guys, happy Friday. Would you guys rather have a Wheel of Time AAA game made exclusively for Xbox or Dune AAA game made exclusively for Xbox? You don't even ask that question. Give me that Wheel of Time AAA game. Well, I'm I mean, going to say heaven. Dune because I've seen Dune, the movie. Uh, yeah. so. Okay, fine. Fair enough. I want I want a Wheel of Time game. Uh, Crazy G14. It would make it though, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, monolith. I'll just say monolith. There we go. <laughs> what about the depths of Gollum? No, absolutely not. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> Throw it in the garbage. Uh, Crazy G14 says, "Hey guys, happy Friday." Don't know if this has been asked. There's if there is one Xbox exclusive you would give up. One, what would it be? And two, what Nintendo and PlayStation exclusive would you take? Sorry for the double question. The great shows are always. You know what? I would give up Halo. So Halo can be on other platforms so it can survive and thrive. And in return, I would want Metroid uh, Dread, or Metroid Prime, one of the Metroid games from Nintendo. And I would want... I would want... hmm, I'd want Spider-Man. Give me Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah. Give me Spider Man. Mm-hmm. That would that that'd be what I what do you what do you want? What, what trade do you be making, Jez? What trade? I want Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. So but you you're also giving up Halo? I'd easily I'd I'd give up Halo for, for <laughs> bloody for I don't know. For free? For nothing? Just take I'd give it. that I'd give it up for free. Nah, I'd i I'd give that up for Astrobot. Okay. Man. Astrobot is yeah. cool. <laughs> um I'd trade Halo for Ghost of Tsushima. I'd trade. Do we? Do, why? Do, how many? Do we have to pick specific Xbox franchises? Just one Xbox exclusive uh, for uh, Nintendo and a PlayStation exclusive. Just one. Mm. Man, I was thinking, like, I'll trade Minecraft for something, but then I was like, man, that'd really hurt the business. <laughs> Well, so said ex- he, said, he said exclusive, and Minecraft's not exclusive, so... Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, in that case, then... Uh, I would trade Forza, the entire franchise, for... Um, mm, that's tough, actually. The Last of Us, definitely. That's a good trade. And I think that's it. I don't really care. I don't really care for Sony's other stuff, to be honest. Right. Uh, Scott the Gamer dude in the Super Chat says, I think the glitter was a tease for a stripper simulator. Oh, man. Imagine that. Um, D-Big, you know a stripper simulator? That would be sick. D-Big Gaming says, will we see horror FPS games come back like Fear? I mean, I would... Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Give me some horror first-person shooters. Horror's making a Fear comeback. Fear was so good. Yeah. Love it. I would love it if that did, did come back. I hope so. Hey, Blinken says, when will we see Blizzard's crafting survival game? That's a good question, Jez. You know, the third-party stuff at Xbox. Could we see Blizzard show up at Xbox's show, maybe, with a uh, uh, look at uh, their new game? Or is that a BlizzCon gonna, announcement? Yeah, I'm going to make a hard prediction, though. You will okay. see Odyssey in November. You will see Odyssey in November at BlizzCon. 
Okay. Yes. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, lurking with my gherkin says, Hey, Randy <laughs> and Jez, love the show. with my gherkin. <laughs> and downloading Diablo 4 now. What class should I play? That's what I asked earlier. What, oh, what class? Tell them, tell them to play a class, Jez. Which, whichever looks the coolest. Whatever looks the coolest. Yes. Pat Daddy says, Jez, I am your daddy. Okay. Daswell Gordon says, Sup, lads. How wild would it be if both Persona 3 Remake and Persona 6 got announced at the showcase? I mean, that would be wild, wouldn't it? That would be wild. Hey, Sean Labrie's in the chat, and he says he works for Roby, too. I wonder if, yeah. I wonder if Sean Labrie... Roby makes... Makes Roby stuff. makes some of... Um, Sean makes some of Roby's graphics, I think. Yeah. That's uh, that's cool. And I want to work for Roby. You want to work for Roby? Yeah, we could all work for Roby. Um, so we got it's a little got bit like ten cards. We got a little bit of time left, uh, like five minutes. Jez, talk about the Jeremy Hunt situation and Brad Smith really quickly. Oh, For the really? ABK stuff, yeah, because I want to end this before the four hour mark, and we're we're fifteen minutes away, fourteen minutes away. So time's a ticking. Wow. Okay. Well, since uh, someone brought it up in chat. Mm-hmm. And it is quite interesting, I suppose. And it's kind of odd that we're doing this after the q <laughs> Whatever. I mean, there wasn't a question about it, so might as well, yeah, right? right? And we, 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 um, do, we do have some time before four hours hits. And we need to end the show before then, so. Yeah. Well, the issue, Jeremy Hunt is the, the I suppose, the equivalent in America is the Treasury Secretary. Okay. U.S. Treasury. Jeremy Hunt's in charge of the, the economy. And uh, Brad Smith, who's in charge of everything to do with Microsoft's legal, you know, everything. He's meeting Jeremy Hunt, who, by the way, used to be the health secretary. Don't know what qualifies him to be the, the chief economist, but whatever. Um, they're, they're, having, they're supposedly having a meeting. And uh, I would love to be a fly on the wall in that meeting. But it's like I said in like some of my earlier analysis, this deal has now gotten political. It's super political now. And um, it's sort of interesting to think about where it could go. You know, I'm sure there's the other re- rumor around mm-hmm. that um, Microsoft is exploring ways of closing the deal without yep. the UK. Yep. So they're, they've, they've started hiring experts in sort of, um, you know, regulatory matters as pertains to this. And to be honest, it's not unprecedented. Um, there has been situations where a tech company has been blocked by the CMA and then just closed the deal anyway and then just swallowed the fine and just be like, yeah, we'll, we'll accept the fine in exchange for this. So, you know, it could be that they end up just doing that, you know, and just being like, yeah, we'll, we'll just take fine. But I've seen some analyses that the fine could be anywhere up to like 10 billion pounds, which is like, I don't know, $15 billion or something. Something like that. I don't know. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of clams, Rand. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, the saga's not over yet, basically. So, what do you think Brad Smith's going there to talk about? What do you think he's gonna? What do you think he's gonna do? Do you think he's gonna wag the finger and be like, "Listen"? <laughs> well, the issue the issue Brad Smith's got, and I'm sure Brad Smith knows this, is far smarter than I am. But the CMA is independent of the government. The CMA is completely independent of the government. The government cannot. The government cannot lean on the CMA without legislation, and they can't create legislation without the, the House of Parliament. So they can't really sort of they can't create legislation to change the way the CMA operates without the support of the entire party and and other stuff. So you know, getting getting that through Parliament when there there are far bigger problems in the UK right now, getting a bill that targets the CMA. That ain't going to happen before, you know, this year, maybe, you know. But I'm sure they'll discuss broader topics of being like, look, you know, you can't keep doing this. And, you know, maybe maybe in the future you need to explore legislation. But there's, they can't fast track legislation. They can't fast track a decision to overrule the CMA. The only legal that I'm aware of mechanism for the government to override the CMA is as pertains to national security. So, like, if Microsoft was to go there and be like, "Look, if you don't, if you don't give us this deal, we're going to exit the UK, 
and your military won't have windows anymore which would be an issue which i think would be an issue of national security because the entire british government runs on windows all the civil service runs on surface for god's sake all civil servants in the uk have windows and they all have surface um so you know the government the government is a big customer of microsoft so i don't know but then that's got political problems because if microsoft threatens to leave the uk over this or threatens to close the deal and ignore the UK, then that gives Microsoft a headache because it makes them look lawless. And then you'll get Democrats and whatever saying that Microsoft think they're above the law. You know, they don't want to be above the law because that's 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 not good for business. So yeah, this is totally political now. And uh, what happens here from here is literally anyone's guess. It's just a big old mess. But mm-hmm. I think the deal will ultimately go through. It'll just be a mess. They'll get it through, but it'll be a mess. That's how it's all going to go down. Yeah. That's my belief. And that's your uh, weekly update for ABK. Uh, find out next week. Because they, they did have their cat tribunal sort of thing that happened this week, right? Uh, the the jo- first part of it, yeah. yeah. And it uh, uh, looked like that was more of a big win for Microsoft because I've seen some of the pictures and it definitely seemed like the CMA wasn't ready or prepared. And uh, the hearing or, or, or is coming sooner than they wanted. Uh, and Microsoft seems pretty happy about that. And there was the announcement of the three uh, judges, I think, today. Um, I saw F- Foss Patton's tweeting about that. So a lot of things going on. Um, I even saw some article about how there's like a House Representative probe into Lena Khan uh, abusing her power. Uh, yes, I saw so that. So yeah. there's, there's stuff going on here. You know, maybe I'll make a video about it soon. Uh, but... Yeah, ABK still going on. So it'd be very interesting to see what comes out of the meeting with Brad Smith and Jeremy Hunt and all this other sort of stuff because Microsoft is exploring its options, hiring lawyers, having them look at the different ways they maybe could close the deal with without the CMA. So, whew. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I uh, just want to thank you all for being here so much. Love you guys. Keep in mind that this is our last show until the 13th. We will be having an Xbox 2 next week, but it will be with somebody else. So you will be getting a show next week, just not with Jez. Um, I'll be in LA. He'll be in LA if asking um, questions. If Yeah, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. I was going to say, like, if you are on the Patreon, um, I will be making a thread probably today where you can pitch questions for me to ask Xbox directly. Mm-hmm. So um, if you're on the Patreon, I'll look out for that thread. Maybe today or tomorrow I'll set it up and you can start asking me questions that, I, you know, obviously I can't guarantee they'll give a response, but, you know, I really want, you know, to serve the community and make sure that um, we can all get our, you know, the things we want answered, like the Dolby Atmos thing. We'll get, we'll hopefully get answers to some of these questions. But yeah. Yeah. I'll so make Jez's, that on Patreon soon. Yeah. Jez is going to ask, you know, Phil and the people there what's going on. Um, yeah. We got, a, we got a bunch of shows coming. So, if you enjoyed the show, like, hit the like button, please. Subscribe if you're new. Follow Jez and myself on Twitter. More Jez because he tweets all the time for you know for any sort of updates. Nah, follow around. Uh, thank Ryan's you so awesome. much for all the Patreon members for supporting what we do. Make sure you check out the Mr. Bad Bit episode. That's live now. Uh, it'll be live for everybody next week. Uh, I think Wednesday we're gonna we're gonna put it live for everybody. Paris yep. Lee's gonna join us for the next Xbox Two after the showcase sometime. So that that's gonna be a lot of fun. So and Raycon, yeah, and shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. Link is in the description if you want to check out their gaming headsets or gaming earbuds or just their everyday earbuds. You get fifteen percent off with the code XB two. Want to thank them for sponsoring us, and um, we will see you next week. Well, I'll see you next week. Jez will see you on the thirteenth after the showcase. So. Yep. Uh, have a good weekend guys take care everybody uh, keep it gaming later later